slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. And the eyes roll back in the head. The shark's eyes. They're not like a human's eyes. The black. It's like a doll's eye. And then you hear that horrible high-pitched scream. You go in the cage. Cage goes in the water. Shark in the water. Would you pipe down? I'm trying to finish this crossword puzzle. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you prefer a scene from Sophie's Choice? <laughs> Welcome everybody to Cinerama 60 and our Summer Vision Movie Marathon. And as we with usual is Mike from Mike's Blu-ray DVDs and our special guest tonight, uh, G-Cap from G-Cap. Jeff. Jeff from G-Cap. That's how it should go. Yeah. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. How are you doing? Doing all right. Doing well. Did the intro come in all right? Yeah, it looked good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Wasn't that the, uh, uh, what's, what was the name of that show? With, uh, oh, yeah, it's uh, that little clip. Get a Life. Yeah, Chris. But I thought that yeah, was. Chris, Chris Elliott. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Elliott, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I just always hilarious. thought that was funny. <laughs> An old yeah. Fox throwback. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that, that show was, uh, was quite brilliant. He's he's hilarious in that show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always yeah, like I had, that. I had it. I have it queued up here, so. Yeah, there's oh, wow. Box yeah. Seven, so, yeah. 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 America's favorite psycho. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't on very long, was it? Like, a uh, couple two seasons. seasons. Yeah. Two, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when he would come on the David Letterman show all the time? Yeah. yeah, I think that's how he got started or something. Yeah. So uh, this evening we're going to be covering Jaws, um, talk a little bit about the movie, and uh, maybe th get some tidbits and things from our guests. And well, my one guest and my co-host, as usual, I'm unprepared. And um, let's get going with this. So um, I know. For GCAP, this is your favorite movie of all time. Jaws is my favorite film of all time. Yes. Yeah. It's I a, know a lot of people true. love the movie. I'm no like expert, but it's my favorite movie. Always, always kind of has been. Yeah. It, it's like a perfect movie in a yes. way. You know, it has very many yeah. throwbacks of old school and new school. You know, it's kind of makes it still, you know, cool now and people mm -hmm. yeah. still discover it and stuff when, whenever i've been asked about why i love jaws the most and why this is my favorite movie it's kind of like what you just said mike i said it's probably the most perfect movie i can think of and it's one that it, it in um it invokes a, an emotion like you know for like fear whether it's the score um you've got great characters excellent pacing i mean they're there's always a movie that you might see that you're like oh i wish they would have done this or you know it would have been great if they did that Jaws is to me perfect. It should never mm -hmm. be ever touched. There's, there's, I've never had a problem with it. I've watched it a million times. I absolutely, I absolutely dig it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a great movie. I could watch it any time of the season, you know, mm -hmm. of the year. It's probably one of those uh, physical medias that you'll purchase in about any format too. Every time a new one mm -hmm. comes out, everybody's like, "I've got to grab it. I've got to grab it." So. Yeah, uh, today was interesting. I listened to a podcast and uh, they were talking about well, the very first laser disc that was released was Jaws. Um, 
because wow. it was through MCA, which is on, was owned by Universal at the time, and it's a Universal movie. So it was the very first Laserdisc release was Jaws. I thought that was interesting. I tried to find my copy of it. And I, I don't know where it is at the moment. So I, you probably I got, got it done. I got the old, I got the newer laser disc of it. Not that first one from whenever that was yeah. 78 or something. Yeah. yeah I, I probably have the same one you do. It's probably the newer. They probably re-released it like with THX or something later on. Didn't they? Yeah. The one I got is like in a thick box. It's a signature collection. There was a, well, here I'll, I'll raise it up. But it was they had a whole series of these back then. I don't know if you can see it. But see, it's kind of a oh, thick yeah, yeah. box. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's got that. That's when that documentary first came out, uh, the making of Jaws. That mm -hmm. you know, the really good documentary. That's when it first appeared on this laser disc. So that's really Which, cool. You, yeah. When it went to DVD, it was basically the same stuff that came from the laser disc. So. But yeah, it's it's kind of cool. I, I don't watch it much, obviously, because you know I got Blu-rays now. But but it's really cool packaging. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I own every I own it on every format. I always tell people this. I own it on every format except Betamax and Laserdisc. You guys, you got the Laserdisc, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a cool booklet in it and everything, yeah. man. It's uh, I got it used, but it's in like mint shape. Yeah. I had the, the VHS, the first one that came out with the um, it was almost like all in black, and it's like a the the poster, the uh, theatrical poster. It's like a very smaller. Mm. It's almost kind of like the box is almost like letter boxed around it. That's hard to explain. Oh, okay. it's, this, and but then there's yeah. the other one that came out where it's like the full size. The VHS is the full size of the poster, yeah. and I have that one as well. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I think it probably came out in all kinds of editions you know because it's one of the biggest movies ever made you know so there's probably many versions you know out there on dvd and when they re-release it you know like now there's a 4k now right I think yeah. I, I, yeah 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 i need to yeah, get it up last summer for 8.99 i thought it was a joke oh wow yeah, i got it off that's amazon 4k book. yeah yeah that's, that's, not that's, have the steel book, book though oh yeah but uh, very nice john very nice yeah, and I, actually, I considered picking up the the regular the regular 4K because I think it came with the booklet and everything. Did yours come with like a booklet? Mine, no, I think mine I, doesn't have a booklet. Okay, I th I thought there was an edition that came out with a booklet. It might been it might have been just one of the like Target or somebody their version they put it out but i think i have an older blu-ray version that had the booklet with it and it basically just it's just the booklet with um pictures in it of the production pictures and stuff like that so it was a uh but i never did go buy it i i had the i already had the movie i was like i'm not going to rebuy it again so yeah 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 it's one of those movies though that i've i have bought it a few times so there's there's a few movies that I'll I guess you could say double dip yeah. sort of you know and that's fine with me you know certain movies not all movies but it's radical retro rewind what's up Ryan <clears throat> hello everyone G caps the king of I assume that's the sharks <laughs> yeah. he always calls me king of the sharks king of the sharks I love shark movies <laughs> mm -hmm. What uh, what's kind of your guys' favorite? Uh, what's your maybe your favorite scenes in the movie? What, what kind of stands out to you? Because obviously mine's probably that scene that I showed earlier in the intro with about the you know where he's he's talking about his experience on the USS Indianapolis and about it mm -hmm. being sunk and it's just so terrifying of him talking about that because that was the real thing that actually happened and the shark attacks are real. That's a real story not by the actual actor, but obviously mm. it came from a survivor's real story more than likely. So, yeah, I don't know. There's so many good scenes in this. It's hard to, I'm never one to like pick my number one, something It's hard for me to choose sometimes, it, especially with jaws. There's so many good scenes, but yeah, it's kind of divided almost in two halves. You got the first half where you got, everything's happening on land and stuff. 
you know, mainly. And then once the other half is when they're on the boat, you know, and they're doing going out to get jaws and everything. Um, I mean, I like the whole movie, but some of those scenes with them together on the boat, just various things. I mean, I just I love watching those scenes, you know. Yeah. But um yeah, you're you're seeing um you're seeing John. That I mean that's I mean that's they they almost made a whole movie about that. Uh there were there was there was plans back in the nineties to make a movie right around the US S Indianapolis story and Clint's yeah. story and have Clint be in it. But uh, I I love the fact that from you know trivia that you know the first you know it's it's not like I'm trashing anybody here, especially you know yeah. <laughs> the deceased, but you know Robert Shaw like like to drink. Uh, that, mm-hmm. that's that's well known and uh you know he he did the he shot the first scene and he was he's he maybe had a little bit too much to drink and he kind of you know di- didn't really didn't it was, was kind of crappy and he felt so bad about it that he he told steven spielberg he, was, he called him and said he was sorry let him do it one more time and that's mm-hmm. the that's the one we got and that scene is amazing um mm-hmm. everybody when they talk about the best monologues that's that's definitely on the list I think mm-hmm. that's great. Um, yeah. If I had to pick a scene myself, I mean, I would obviously pick that one, but I want to pick it because you picked it. I mean, the opening's pretty awesome. And, yeah. and the fact that it was shot during the day, but they did day to night. And mm-hmm. it's just, I mean, it's, you don't see anything, but it's still, the, it's the thing you think about when you think of Jaws, you think of that scene. Yeah. Well, they were talking yeah. about it like it was rare for those in that day and age where it kind of opens with a semi nude girl, you know, in the water at some point, I I don't think you really see a lot, but you know, she's semi nude or whatever, but it, yeah, it just takes off and it's just great. But yeah, I think we all feel the same about that one scene. That's probably one of my favorite scenes in it too, but, but yeah, that's, I always said, I'm I'm like that, that dude, I'm, he's so lucky that he passed out on the beach and follow her in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bruce would have had a double snack. Yeah, yeah. There's, it's kind of um to get um. There has been a lot of like bull shark attacks in um those northern waters, especially in the um, intercoastal areas, and uh, so it's kind of it's it may have been a little prelude to that actually being a reality, but bull sharks can, um, they can go into, um, they can go into freshwater. They can live in freshwater. In fact, they lay their, they have their offspring in freshwater and they usually, usually go up intercoastal waterways and up rivers that connect to the ocean and they kind of swim up in there and there. So there's a little, bull shark tidbit but they've been known to attack mm-hmm. people in those kind of waters and that creepy thing being in a freshwater situation and mm-hmm. there being yeah. sharks yeah well there was one scene they filmed uh they they got a little person um and they put it some of the, one of the underwater scenes and they put it put them in the cage in order to make they they wanted a great white but of course they didn't couldn't get a great white so it made the shark they had look bigger from the force perspective of it by putting the smaller person in the cage, which made the shark look bigger. So that, that was one of the little secret little tidbits about it. And some of those underwater scenes, you know, so it, it makes the shark look huge. And so, and then, and then they had to re they had to refilm some scenes and they ended up doing it in a swimming pool and, uh, add it, um, they had to put some stuff in it to make it murkier to look like the Atlantic and um, I think they covered it up and stuff. I, they did a pretty good job. I mean, that was some really cool special effects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they had the smaller Practic- diver in there to make it because, you know, it's hard. You know, Jaws is like this King Kong, Godzilla, gigantic, yeah. you know, shark, bigger, you know. Yeah. So it, it did. It did. The effect, you know, it made it made the shark look a lot, you know, bigger. And then mm-hmm. the, the shark actually gets tied up in the um, the, the crane line. That lowered mm. the, the cage into the water so that whole thing where it's like thrashing about um yeah. when hooper kind of escapes and all that like that really happened and that, yeah. that I, like that person almost died um which is uh pretty crazy to think about but who that makes for a great scene that's another good one the, the hooper yeah. uh, cage attack yeah 
Glad you yeah, I just that found out. that out. I just found that out today. So I was like, whoa, that's something yeah. I didn't know. So that was, that was pretty cool. It fooled yeah. me all these years. Yeah, they had a lot of trouble with uh, the mechanical shark as well. The, the way I understand mm -hmm. it, they um, yeah had a lot of setbacks when they built it. And then I th they built it, you know, obviously they built it in a, a shop somewhere on dry land. So the first time they stuck it in the water, it started failing obviously <laughs> this has never yeah. been tested in the water they basically had to rush to get it built and then they they shipped it all the way to the east coast and when they tested it in the water it all started failing i think they had to ship it back so it had a lot of delays in the production yeah so. first one they put in the water sunk like a stone right to the bottom yeah. they had to crane it out yeah yeah uh, that was one of the things they they yeah. insisted on filming out out east because it was uh, the water wasn't as deep, um, so if they had to recover the shark, they wouldn't have to go far. I think it was like thirty-five thousand feet, or maybe that's too. I don't know. What it wasn't. It didn't sound very deep, but it was deep. But you know, because they had to recover it once anyway. So, so I thought that was cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was reading on here. That there was another fact that I was reading about. Um, I believe there was a scene. There's a scene in the um, that was supposed to be. Excuse me. I'm sorry, John. Okay. While you look, while you look yeah. that up, can I just before we we get off the um, <clears throat> what's it the uh, this the uh, what we're talking about about the the shark sinking and putting yeah. it into the the water and all that the um, yeah. So I think there was there's three sharks. I believe. So there was like the, um, but I, but I guess that, that first one, the, 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 the full Bruce, the full head Bruce that you, that you showed in the opening, I think that's, yeah, yeah. I think that's the one that wound up, uh, wound up sink, sink, sinking like a stone. This, this, yeah. and, and the fact that you were saying that the, the shark wasn't shown much because it was having yeah. so many issues so much mm -hmm. that the, one of the, do, the newer documentaries called the, the shark, yeah. you know, it's not working. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. that is, uh, it, it's a happy accident because I think if you showed that shark and that they were supposed to show the shark all the time, shark at the beginning, shark uh, yeah. with the kittener scene, shark everywhere. And the fact that it doesn't until the end that it just builds up that tension is a happy accident. It's one of the, yeah. one of the things that makes the movie good too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I get, that's kind of a, always been a kind of a big selling point in suspense movies is not revealing your, you know, not revealing the, um, you know the character of revealing the the villain or whatever too much during the movie and in horror movies obviously that's a that's been kind of a trope for years mm -hmm. yeah uh, but what i was talking about earlier this is uh well that wouldn't yeah oh, okay here it is it, it was a dealing with gregory peck and um the quint scene there evidently was another quint scene and he um quoted like a line from moby dick and and they had to cut it out of the movie because uh, Gregory Peck didn't, uh, he owns the rights to Moby Dick or something like that. And he wouldn't allow him to have it. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. But the reason Gregory mm, yeah. Peck didn't let them use it was not because he didn't want them to use it or he thought Jaws was trash yeah. or going to be trash. He just, he didn't like his performance in the movie and the thing that like, he just, he didn't like that movie personally and him being in it. So that's why, that's why he didn't show it, which is interesting. Yeah. But the scene you're talking about is cool because it's almost it mirrors the um the other movie he was in the original Cape Fear. So you had okay. Quint was watching mm -hmm. it, laughing and being so um so you know just vulgar with his laughing and so disruptive that he caused the whole theater to clear out. So it yeah. kind of it was, was kind of like the Cape Fear movie too. But uh, I, thought, oh, that, yeah. I thought that was kind of a funny uh, parallel too. Yeah, there, mm -hmm. it's it's interesting. Some of the people that were going to be those characters, like other actors that turned down those parts. Um, I can't remember them all, but it was like a who's who of people like in the seventies that were going to be in those roles and stuff. And it's, it's really cool that um, they got who they got because that was, I couldn't think of anybody else, you know, being, you know, Richard, the Richard Dreyfus one and Roy Scheider. I couldn't imagine anybody else being those characters, yeah. you know, but, but yeah, it was like a who's who's list of, 
people turned it down and stuff like that. And like yeah. they they even had thoughts of like getting Charlton Heston to be mm -hmm. the Quint part and stuff, and he would have been too too masculine maybe for the part if there's such a thing or something it was something like that and uh, yeah i couldn't imagine charlton heston being him just but yeah it's like a perfect yeah. cast you know well i mean yeah. just american zoetrope at that that time period they just um were hitting it out of the park as far as the movies they made you know star wars jaws um well, obviously the um, oh, excuse me. I'm going. I'm having a bad night, fellas. I'm sorry, and I had a bad memory night. But um, well, well Mike but, brought up um, something yeah. great about the the Who's Who cast. So when he we, and you guys were just talking about Heston, yeah. Heston had been in all these movies like Earthquake, where he's like the hero and he overcomes everything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if somebody went in there and watched Charlton Heston play Sheriff Brody, they're like, oh, he's going to kill yeah. the shark. Like, there's no there's no suspense, I guess, yeah. at least mm -hmm. with back then. Yeah, um, yeah. And the other name was Duvall, Robert Duvall, almost. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, he was Sheriff Brody. And finally, something happened where oh, I, I can't imagine Roy Scheider not being Sheriff Brody. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, another, it was something about accident. I think it was something about money or something. Mm -hmm. And then like he turned, he famously turned down the Godfather three too, because yeah. he wanted money, which would have probably made Godfather three better mm -hmm. if he was back for it and stuff. But yeah, just really good actors that, you know, just, I don't yeah, think but, they would have fit that movie though, but th there was a lot of good people up for it. I'm trying, I wish I could remember them all, but yeah, the Godfather and apocalypse now is one that I was trying to think about, but all those movies mm -hmm. in that era was just crazy but you got i mean i know mike knows american zoetrope i assume you do too mm -hmm. that name so mm -hmm. yeah yeah red yeah. dawn everything okay but red yeah, dawn he's not necessarily the guy directed it's not john milius it necessarily connected he's connected by writing to like to um apocalypse now but he mm -hmm. was kind of in the, he wrote some other stuff for a, some of those american zoetrope movies that were when they were still using that, which I don't yeah. think that ever really came to fruition, the American Zoetrope, because they all kind of got big by the time they had really formed it. So, Yeah, I, I saw the name again recently on something. I don't know if it was a newer movie or a sort of newer movie, but like recent movies. So I don't know if he's brought the name back, you know, trying to bring the brand name back, quote. But I like it. I thought yeah. it was a pretty cool, and it had a cool logo and, everything so but yeah that's i mean and you know it was the beginning of the blockbuster you know you had you know jaws and then you next year you got what was the big one for 76 uh something in 77 of course was star wars so mm -hmm. it was kind of the you know kind of started that yeah i mean they used thing. to throw the summer movies um those were the garbage movies they would throw those away because nobody went and saw those movies and Jaws mm -hmm. was supposed to come out, I believe, like Christmas time, which would have oh, been yeah. mm -hmm. interesting in an alternate universe. But yeah, they they put it in the summer, and that I mean, Jaws started the summer blockbuster. Like yeah. that's yeah. Um, that's not me saying that. That's that's what yeah. started yeah. the whole craze. Yeah, yeah. At some point during the movie, uh, even Spiel uh, Steven Spielberg tried to leave the project. He wanted out at some point. Yeah, I think he thought he was over his head, and um, they wouldn't let him out of the contract. So he he stayed in he wanted to jump pictures and go to another movie and stuff and um i guess he stuck it out and um which was another thing i learned recently and i had never knew that you know but but yeah it, i mean it's probably his most successful movie uh or more his best one of his best movies you know he's direct he's directed so many good movies and yeah uh, it still comes back to jaws you know it's just overall you know yeah, but well, it also gave him the you know opportunity to do ET and oh yeah and everything going on from that the success from Jaws. But I think the I yeah. think him directing Duels what gave him the opportunity to do Jaws. That's correct. Yep. But yeah. um, it's kind of um, it's kind of crazy thinking about it. Like 
obviously some of the producers in the 70s were kind of tired I, i'm pretty sure this is a quote from somebody else but you know producers like robert evans and people like that during the 70s they i think they uh was kind of I think they were kind of getting, I don't, I, I don't know. You kind of, this was the era of like whenever the studio started getting buying out by corporations and they started mm -hmm. doing different things. And I think they had had a bad run of movies and they just started taking chances on people. Cause I mean, that's ultimately what happened with George Lucas and star Wars and Steven Spielberg, mm -hmm. you know, they just got allowed, they, they were allowed to make them the kind of movie they wanted to make. And, you know, it really began the era of, obviously, it began the era of the blockbuster. And Jaws may be considered the first blockbuster, really. It's, yeah. It was the biggest movie Hollywood had ever seen at the time in 75. So, it, obviously, it hadn't, you know, a couple of years away from Star Wars. But Yeah, I mean, in the book that came out previously, before it was a big hit. I mean, it was a... Yeah. Um, Somebody got their hands on it. The pro, you know, they got the property and stuff, so they could, you know, make a movie and stuff. So it was a very hot yeah. project, you know, cooking there for a minute because they knew it was, you know, if they could turn it into a movie, it would be a big hit, you know. But they didn't know it was going to be such a great movie, like like it turned out. They just thought, yeah, it'd be a average little shark movie, maybe at the drive-in. It won't be nothing, but it'll make money. But now this is like beyond, you know, you know. It, has a legacy, uh, you know, and stuff. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, eventually, I mean, I remember the reading about that. Uh, he, he hated everything that Spielberg was doing with Jaws, especially the way he en it, it ends with uh, mm. spoiler alert. When he, when he kills a shark with uh, shooting the air tank, he thought like, this is ridiculous. Cause in the book, I read the book too. And in the book, it mm -hmm. gets kind of just harpooned to death and just beat down to where it finally just, sink to the bottom and dies mm -hmm. and he thought this yeah. is ridiculous like this is uh, kinda... that's so silly but then when he saw it on the screen and he saw the everybody cheering and clapping and screaming he's like wow this is i, I was wrong this is great so yeah the mm -hmm. harpooning and thing is probably more the moby dick ending that it kind of had and that's kind of differentiated itself from moby dick a little bit by blowing mm -hmm. him up <laughs> that would have been horrible yeah, yeah. it have you guys seen book, that? that's different yeah. have you guys seen the the uh Moby Dick with the Gregory Peck. I think it's like 1956 or something. Have you yeah. all seen that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I've seen it a few times and I thought it was pretty good, you know? Yeah. Um, it's yeah, no I, don't, Jaws, I don't like his performance but... <laughs> in it. I think it's, I think it's good. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. That's good. I always enjoyed Gregory Peck regardless, you know, yeah. the stuff yeah. he's done. Yeah. Probably more of the Westerns he's done though. I'm more of a fan of his Westerns, but mm -hmm. he's done a lot of good things. Yeah. He's, he's done a lot of different stuff yeah but yeah that's um fine act um, that gregory yeah text. fine act yeah yeah fine yeah um yeah. i was gonna say but yeah it's a great movie um i was I always lose my train of thought sometimes i'm trying yeah. to remember stuff I, I was trying to think earlier you might both of you guys might know it a little bit better than I hadn't watched the, as usual, I didn't do any homework on this, Mike. I'm sorry. But I usually sit down and watch the best, the special features of the movie. And, mm -hmm. and I've watched it before, and I can't remember. What was the deal with the transfer, the 4K transfer? Do you remember what they talked about with the, the 4K transfer? This would probably been on the Blu-ray release back 10 years ago when it first came out on Blu-ray. And they, they talked about, there was something about the process. I forget what they said yeah they um they restored it like like you said about 10 years ago or something like that so i guess i don't know i'm I'm not too familiar with it i know that they um i'm trying to think if they did a 4k restoration at that time uh, i don't know if that sounds like too long ago i'm trying to look at the this print is so small in here i can't read it um when this came out because i got that um that one blu-ray that has the restoration mm -hmm. stuff on it mm -hmm. um um yeah i don't know they had to go back and like completely clean it up you wouldn't think it would have that much damage only being you know 47 years old you know but they had to go at the time it was probably like 35 years old or something and it had a lot it had lost a lot of color 
a lot of the color had faded and they had to really go in there and clean it up which is did they did they actually use the mat you think they could have found another 35 millimeter print or whatever however it was printed you think they mm -hmm. could have found another print that was better conditioned but i assume they just went from the masters the actual original yeah. masters I yeah, assume. camera negative or something yeah yeah no. um I don't know. Universal had a fire at one point. I don't know if it just affected their um, music catalogs or if any films got burned up or they lost anything. I'm not really sure about that. But I, I would imagine Jaws, they would be holding on to that with a. Well, well I, you know, this is something interesting about that. I could have swore I seen a documentary. One, it was a documentary about, about these salt mines that they have, like, kind of in the. They're all over the country but mm -hmm. i don't it, they had but they were storing old films in these salt mines because they're they you know they built these huge huge cavernous warehouses to store you know to store all kinds of stuff for the military mm -hmm. but they also they were also um storing old films in and i'm pretty sure they said mm -hmm. that jaws and some of the steven spielberg's older movies were kept in that because they're, you know, they're pretty much a continuous, um, mm -hmm. a continue, you know, the, the humidity's a continuous, um, at a continuous point and everything, you know, the temperature's yeah. it's like pretty the relative. So, yeah. you know, so it's, um, yeah. pretty, it's kind of an interesting thing, but, uh, that sounds, it's kind of interesting to think that it faded, but it probably was stored someplace else a long time before that. It's just vinegar syndrome, you know, it just happens with, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it would have been it would have been on safety film anyway. Newer, so we wouldn't have, but it still yeah. degradates some of that. Yeah, stuff still, still, yeah, yeah. I think there's a big storage yeah. facility in Utah. I think, and I know there's one in Virginia somewhere. There's a big, there are two huge ones that have a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, don't quote me on that, but I believe there's one in Virginia and somewhere out west, like Utah or somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, that'd, that'd be interesting to go there. I'd, I'd be curious to walk around there for a while and look at stuff. Yeah, it, yeah. It'd be I don't, cool. I don't know much about the uh, the transfer, like like you're all speaking about. But I mean, I remember when it went from because I, I I wore that VHS tape out when I mm -hmm. when the DVD came out for the 25th anniversary in um, yeah. 2001 with like the the more kind of future i was called like the futurist looking at jaws poster yeah and you know um watching the beginning scene with chrissy when yeah it's the the shark's point of view when he's coming up on her and mm -hmm. you can actually see that she's um nude where before mm -hmm. watching it on tv all the time hbo vhs it looked very dark so i always yeah. thought it was i always thought the dvd was a good transfer so yeah i, I figured well, i don't know how much better it's gonna get but they could release a another one tomorrow. I'm sure they'll release 5K, 8K. Yeah, 10K I mean, I'm, one day I'll buy, I'll buy them all. I'll buy every single one. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> why I'm saying I haven't seen the 4K, but it's probably really you can probably see it even better. But probably mm -hmm. back when they showed it on TV, they could easily kind of blur it a little bit or something, darken it because it was in the water mm -hmm. or something. I don't know, but but man, yeah, it's it's one of those movies. Um. What, what did you think about Jaws 2? I don't know why we bring up that or not, but just yeah, I always kind of I've always had a little little liking for number two, but the other ones are just like you know I no go, I, no I go tell sometimes. You, a lot of a lot of people like a lot of like like I don't know, call them Jaws snobs or whatever. They they get they get yeah. a little tiffy with me because I actually think Jaws two was awesome. Jaws I yeah. uh, Mike I saw Jaws two before I saw the original Jaws. Oh, that really? was a little tight. And it was on HBO, and it, Jaws two was, you know, was insane. And you see the shark the whole time. I was scared to death to get in my swimming pool. It was an above ground swimming pool, four feet. You know, it wasn't a very big pool in my backyard. I was scared to death to get in the pool. And finally, when I saw Jaws, and you know, maybe like a couple years later, and I, um, I just for some reason it wasn't as fast paced as Jaws two because Jaws two to me is I always like to call that the the shark slasher film. Where yeah. Jaws is like the like the, the I guess like the, the shark art film. Um, yeah, but right. I absolutely yeah. love Jaws too. I have a Jaws two te the teaser trailer poster with the shark's um, fin 
in the sunset where the the water almost looks like blood i have that poster yeah. hanging up down here That's and cool. um in my area here i i absolutely i think jaws 2 is great it's yeah. not as good yeah. as the first one i'm not going to even argue that but it's very cool i like it that's a lot of cool yeah. scenes a lot of cool kills high body count i like it yeah i mean it's hard to you know it's hard to outdo the the original but i thought it was you know pretty decent for a you know uh pretty good for a sequel um, I like the art. I think the artwork for that one is, is that the one where the, the woman's water skiing and Jaws is coming up behind it? I don't know if that's two. I think it's two. Yeah, that's three. that's yeah. the theatrical poster for two. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I always thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. There's another the one they have too, where the, um, if you remember the scene with, uh, what's her name? Tina, Neptune's Folly, that boat where she's out with that, uh, what was his name? I think it's Mark. And yeah. uh, he, like he eats her. I mean, he eats the, uh, or I said she, sorry, it's Brusette, the second one. Um, the, the female shark eats uh, that guy, the boyfriend in front of her, and then she's like praying to God and she like hides in her boat. And Brusette swims away and leaves her alone. But like that scene, like that, of th that's like a, there's like an alternate theatrical poster of that, and it has the, the original shark artwork from the first poster where it's coming up out of the water, but instead of going for Chrissy. It's going mm -hmm. for that guy in the water, holding on to the side of the boat. It's pretty cool if you haven't seen that one too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. About the artwork, I mean, the poster alone is so iconic. You know, the mm -hmm. font, um, the artwork. I mean, how many things can you think of that it's been turned into, just in the internet age? You know, where somebody's changed it to some. But even before then, how much, how influential, just that, you know, original poster was. Just the, you know, mm -hmm. which is really, you know just makes it even more iconic of a movie, you know? Yep. No. Yeah. But, um, if you ask Steven like Spielberg what he thinks of it, um, and what he thinks of the rest of the sequels, he has some kind of contract with Universal that will go on long past his death that Jaws, the original Jaws, will never, ever, ever, go under any circumstances, be released with in a set or anything like that with all the rest of the sequels i don't know if you guys knew that or not oh no i didn't know that because i have it's, a blu-ray set that's got two three and four yes but it doesn't have one though and it, nope he's no he 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 and uh dreyfus went and did close encounters he didn't like what they did with the rest of the movies so yeah he signed some kind of um exclusive deal or some kind of exclusive contract that they can never be released in a set yeah, that's, or anything. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess that's the, that's the that's the that's the one that we're yeah that's the one that Mike was talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can you can tell that how he. Uh, I guess that pretty much answers how he feels about those sequels. You know, <laughs> you don't know, anywhere near those literally. Yeah, but, I mean, Roy yeah. Scheider was. I mean, he tried to get out of doing the second one, kicking and screaming, but. He mm -hmm. was locked into a contract too. Yeah. And because he's a pro, he did it. And I thought he did a good job in it. Yeah. Well, him, you know, he never broke out as like a big leading star. I mean, he was in so many good movies, you know, French Connection, mm -hmm. stuff like all the way through the 70s. Marathon you know, Man. Marathon Blue Man. Uh, uh, what's that one? Uh, Sorcerer. Mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite ones with him in it um, and stuff. And yeah, he kind of yeah. started drying up by the eighties. I mean, he did some good movies like 52 pickup. I think. Yes. It was. Yes. And I always liked that yeah. one. Um, but yeah. he, I don't know. He's a, he's a perfect supporting actor or something, but he doesn't seem like a supporting actor. You know what I mean? He's not quite the star, but he's not quite a supporting actor. He's somewhere in between there. Cause he does a little bit more than just stand around or something, but you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm trying to i don't know yeah kind of a warren oats or something he's a little bit more of a leading man than warren oats maybe you know yeah else. yeah i mean he's been in plenty yeah. of movies where he starred yeah. but they weren't you know big yeah. movies or anything but it's in all, all that jazz um i remember there's another oh, yeah. movie that he was in that not a lot of people have seen that i actually think is kind of cool it's called night game have you guys ever seen that night oh game. yeah yeah yeah, yeah i good. actually like that i forgot movie. about that one yeah yeah all that jazz is really good yeah mm -hmm. i got I got the Criterion Blu-ray of that one, and yeah, it's that's a good performance. That ending, man. Oof. Yeah, that was wild. I feel like last, it's like the last half I, hour. Yeah, I was wanting to. Yeah. I, for some reason, I thought I had the Blu-ray released in the. I thought I had the the media book, 
but I just mm-hmm. have the I have that hundred anniversary. Oh, still got okay. all the stickers on it. They put so many mm-hmm. damn stickers. I didn't want to ruin the cover by pulling them off. But yeah, yeah. well, if you get it That's from Walmart, the one I got too, John. Yeah, yeah, like like that Best Buy yeah. one up in the right hand corner. Those are the ones that's yeah. so hard to get off, especially if you get one from Walmart or somewhere. Yeah. That mm-hmm. you yeah. can get the others off, but that one, and like, yeah. But yeah, I left mine but, on too because there was no way that thing was coming off without destroying it. Like yeah, I was would, saying earlier, that I thought there was a booklet that came with one of them. It might have been the DVD, the one I'm thinking about. Maybe I had a DVD. So I don't. Remember. Yeah, maybe there was a special know. edition with stuff in it because I can't remember. Of the ones I have, don't have um booklet. I have a DVD uh, copy too, and it doesn't have anything with it either. Um, but what the laser disc does, though. But what I was going to say about um, Jaws three is, for some reason, what I always remember it. I always hate, like I've said this before, when I've talked to other people, I hate when people have amputations in a movie. I hate seeing somebody get. I don't know if I've got a phobia for amputations. I, I hate seeing it. I hate seeing it in a movie. And that opening scene in Jaws 3 where the 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 guy in the boat gets his arm bit off and and it's just the weird the way he reacts cuz he like he like he gets attacked but he don't realize what happens and he sits down in the boat and realizes his his arm's been bitten off and yeah. And it's just a it's just a creepy beginning because it used to be on it's like one of those movies that's on Showtime or HBO all the time and I would see it as a kid a lot. Cause it just replay a whole lot. And uh, I remember, I was well, always would remember you, that scene. What would you rather have your arm or leg or something completely cut off or just like mangled where it looks like, I don't know what it would look like. Just all chewed up. Cause a shark bite is like, not like a lot of other kind of animal attacks, you know, it just leaves your muscle just all, you know, messed up. So I don't know if I would, I don't know. I think I would take the scar. I don't know if I could lose. Yeah hopefully not lose it but it's yeah. it's a horrible way man like when you hear uh quint when he's getting at the end he's getting chewed up and he's just putting everything in it. he's just Wah. he's just yeah. like he's been eaten alive it's like i yeah. mean he was such a tough guy all through the movie and then yeah. right then it's just like he's letting everything out i mean that must be the yeah. most worst yeah. uh, unimaginable thing you know to be chewed up like that yeah you, you, uh, so i thought it was good performance in that Oh, yeah. The the movie wasn't like great. It was just a bioptic. But you um, do you remember the story of the the girl surfer who got her arm bit off? The movie was called Soul Surfer. But yeah, mm, do you guys remember yeah. that happening? That's yeah. pretty pretty terrifying. Yeah, yeah, true scenario, true story or something. Yeah, sharks are you know horrific. You know, I just when you think about the ocean and. Like a lot of times you go to the ocean and you go out and swim, you don't think about it. But like, and I guess you go to Florida or something where mostly I've been, you you don't think about it as much because they, they're there, but you, they're not like, well, if you go off the coast of California where there's a lot of them, you know, people out there who mm-hmm. surf, they really are surfing with the sharks. You know, there's a lot of them because the water's warm and wherever the water's mm-hmm. warm at, they're usually infested. So it's a, yeah, it's a kind of a scary deal. You got to, got to be yeah, the, uh, have the nerves of steel to do that well the few stuff. times a uh, few times i've been to florida and gotten in the water and the beach and stuff it you can't help but think that you know i, I go yeah. up to my waist for a minute or something just walk out there or something you know and yeah. it's just because i've heard stories where they've come really close like that in low water you know stuff so yeah i i lived in florida for many years and that's why i won't go to uh i won't i won't swim when it gets too dark it's uh, because mm-hmm. the bull sharks will come in shallow. And I think I'm more scared of bull sharks and tigers than I would be like a great white. Um, mm-hmm. Cause they're more aggressive and they're, 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 they're hunting. They'll come yeah. in, they'll come in a little bit more shallow too. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe if I saw a great white shark I'd, in the, in the wild, I would still crap my pants. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm oh, not yeah. trying to say that, but <laughs> more realistically when I'm, you know, even at levels this, this high and I'm swimming, yeah. Yeah. um, you know, I'll, I'll still always be like, um, you know, try, try to make sure that's, that's like, that's like bull shark territory. Yeah. That's yeah. That's uh, the ocean. A lot of people think, yeah, I love to live on the beach. You know, I love to, you know, have a you know home on the beach or something like that. And they, you know, see 
like a dream house or something in California, Malibu or someplace like that. And you hear people talk about living there and like at nighttime, you just look out across the ocean. It's just black, you know, it's just mm. pitch black. Mm. And it's just like, it's a different world at nighttime than versus the daytime. It's just a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's kind of interesting economy but it's a uh, yeah it's well, like outer my... space but like on earth i mean it's i mean there's so many things like all kinds of creatures besides sharks you know there's riptides that can get you you can yeah. you know you get lost at sea um you can lose your yeah. direction you can tire mm -hmm. like it's like humans don't belong in the water um mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's 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 really crazy when you think about it but i don't know I, I try to enjoy the beach but even to this day i get into the water i hear dun dun Done, done. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I can't yeah. help it. That's what I mean. It's yeah. uh, the the move. The Jaws just has a. Uh, it's something that just stays with you. Anybody I, will do the, the the Jaws theme when they're in the yeah. water. I mean, I think anybody. Day. I think anybody that's grown up in the eighties will will, will uh, you know relate to that. You know, I'm not sure about my kids and stuff if they would get that same little goofy thing though. But my my wife uh, actually was she she was raised in Miami for a little while and she was swimming one day. She got stuck on a sandbar for a while. She had swimmed at swam out a little bit and she got stuck somehow and she was out there and they had to come out and get her. So it's kind of frightening. Like you were just talking about, you know, the currents and stuff changing and everything. And mm -hmm. so she, she was, you know, scared. And so, well, it's crazy how much if when you, when you're out in the ocean, like how far you'll like if you're just playing on in the waves and stuff and just letting the water kind of keep taking you, you know, back and forth, not going out far, but how far you'll get pushed down the shoreline from where you originally started and how quickly it'll happen. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. But I always think about um, those guys because those guys that go big wave hunting, those guys, especially the guys that do offshore in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um like that's shark territory big time where they go out and catch those big waves like they're kind of off the shore of hawaii like a mile or two offshores where they get those really huge waves mm -hmm. and um yeah that's you know it's shark territory out there real bad i mean it's it's just crazy oh yeah yeah um well the other thing you know to bring up about the movie is the uh you know the the music the score, yes. you know, by um, John Williams. I mean, it's yes. it, it's one of his most famous, you know, themes, if not his yep. most famous, you know, I don't know. I mean, he, you know, he, he got what Star Wars too, you know, he did Star Wars and then he did Jaws and it's just so iconic. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a movie that has so much going for it. it just has so many milestones about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Me, many, he won the Academy ways Award for topped. it. Yeah. Um, it's for for that theme, and it's probably one of the most iconic themes ever. I'm um, just I'm just saying, it's just just in general. Yeah. I mean, yeah Indiana Jones is a, a famous theme, and Star mm -hmm. Wars, and and all that stuff is. Um, but I think one of the most unsung heroes of Jaws, and I brought this up earlier, was the pacing, was Vernon Fields, winning the um, winning her Oscar for the edit. Mm. Uh, Spielberg himself will say the Williams for sure that theme helped him you know helped his career and he said this oh, movie yeah. wouldn't have been as good if he didn't have her to edit it um, what was her name it's, again it's the whole pacing that that her her editing was just that was, that's on point what was her name Vernon Fields Vernon Fields okay mm. I, I know the name I could I didn't hear you the first time but um I'm trying to see that's that's kind of an interesting thing to bring up about the editing is Star Wars was the same way. Like Star Wars was a mess and he brought in George Lucas brought in essentially his wife to recut the movie at the end is his wife and another guy. And they mm. recut the movie and really helped it. And they, they messed around with it a little bit, which we've all seen the documentaries about that stuff. And, and also the music's made that movie as well. So it's really important. Editing's really important because it's really determines the pacing of the movie. And, 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 and two, some of the, you know, the act acting, the timing from the actors and timing, comedic timing as well can be, you know, can be manipulated with, uh, with the editing. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting, um, 
it's interesting when they, a movie can be reshaped that way. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you think this will be a movie that will be rebooted in our lifetime? Like so many other TV not. shows and no. movies, you know what I mean? That's, I, I just, not, not while Spielberg's alive. I don't think so. I don't think he'll allow it. No. And hopefully yeah. that contract that Jeff was talking about a minute ago, hopefully that contract prevents that from happening. I don't know if it's yeah. went, he's went back and kind of, um, re-edited that contract and um to be specific about that because there's mm -hmm. nothing more i hate than reboots there I, I hate it i'm sorry mm -hmm. i hate reboots and how are you yeah, going to reboot that too john because think about it guys yeah. and I, I could be wrong this might just be my opinion but all the shark i mean there's some good shark movies that come out i do like deep blue sea um i do like the shallows i think the, those sharks are a little bit probably not the cgi i'm talking just practical part of it the practical mm -hmm. usage of it um the best shark practical is bruce mm -hmm. and that was yeah. that movie's 1975 and we're in we're yeah. in 2022 and the sharks on these, these tubi movies that have come out it's garbage takes you out of yeah. the whole thing and yeah. that that shark sunk all the time and it's only a piece of a shark and yeah. it it almost sunk their no pun intended it almost it almost sunk the production of jaws so mm -hmm. for them to try to reboot something it's going to be garbage just for the fact that the shark yeah. from 1975 with the jowl and all that still looks yeah. more realistic and cooler than any of the sharks all the way up to 2022. Now, that just might be my yeah. opinion. But well, that's yeah. Well, what's what's sad about what you just said is true, but what they'll, you know, even if they did remake it, it would just, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be the same. It would just be another, um, you know, open water type movie. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same thing is the original jaws still has you know what i mean like it, it would just be another shark movie you know people would forget about the original in a way like like a younger generation will look at it and be like oh this is well, just another shark movie you know what i mean right without really appreciating the original which they didn't need was, to make a remake you know it was like that remake of piranha yeah. the first piranha is you know a classic movie i like the first piranha you yeah. know it's kind of it's kind of got that same little bit of terror like Jaws does, but then the remake mm -hmm. was the remake has that horrible scene where uh, it's Jerry O'Connell's brother. What's his? I don't know his name, but oh. his brother was the one that Jerry O'Connell. I forgot brother his brother's was in name. A, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he fucking it's it's that another scene where he like falls in the water and like he they haul him out of the water and, and they're shooting like a por okay they're shooting a porn on this boat. They're like a porn crew shooting a porn. He falls in the water and they yank him out and he's like, they've ta it's they've taken my dick. They've taken my dick. And it's just this, it completely deflates the movie. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, it's another, you know, sometimes there's a scene in a movie that just like ruins the whole movie. You know, it's like, and, and that was it, you know, to make it worse, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I recently watched Piranha. Of course um, he was going to die because they had completely Bled him out. to the skeleton from waist down but yeah. still you know yeah. it was still like it's just what there's there's some things that just i don't know it's just it's i i yeah. i appreciate that movie for its silliness if i if there was one thing i had to, a bone to pick with is that they they killed off hooper in the beginning i was like you can't do that but i but it's eli roth so i get he he's mm -hmm. probably a bigger yeah. jaws fan than i am and i that was a cool thing that he got, you know, he got to have Richard Dreyfus actually come back and do that when mm -hmm. he's like, I'm never going to play Hooper again. So he doesn't really play Hooper, but he's dressed <laughs> like Hooper. It's, it's Hooper. Yeah. But that, that, that movie was just, that was 3D, right? That was, that was the one in th either oh, 3D, uh, yeah, 3D, 3D, so. Chris. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Chris yeah. O'Connell. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, okay. Chris O. Yeah. Or Charlie, that sounds okay. right. I can't remember one of the two. That's right. It might, it might I think it's Charlie Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. I think I think it's Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good one, dude. I'm bad with actors' names, so that that's. I mean, I totally. That. I mean, better no, with no, I forgot he was in but, it. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just hope they don't remake it. Let's let's just keep our fingers no. crossed that the no. ruin our one yeah. favorite movie or something, you know. But yeah. oh, they this day and age, if they if they could, they would. That's all yeah. this generation's about. They just, they have to ruin, you know, they have, they have to ruin IPs. That's all they're doing. They're just ruining IPs across the board. You know, 
with their craziness. It's just, uh, it's nuts. Yeah, well, another I because to see some originality again, you know. So. Well, if you don't, I, I apologize, Jeff. I want to, while well, I have it on the top of my head, I want right. to say this. They, I think a lot of it comes from like this generation. They don't, it's not, I mean, really, even our generation, but we kind of got a little bit of best of the both worlds. We see, you know, we grew up before the internet and post internet, you know, or the, you know, current internet as we know it. We grew up. You know, a little before so our imagination we used to have to have an imagination as a kid you know you had to have mm -hmm. an imagination and if you were back in those days and prior to this you had to have an imagination when you were writing so you had to sit down and think stuff up but you know these kids and the younger generation they have you know they go on tv they go on the internet and they have any kind of entertainment and and instant information so they don't have to really have a large imagination so they're just not mm -mm. i just don't think they're come they just don't have any they're just drawing from the old stuff they just watch something and that's where they get their inspiration and they just remake it mm -hmm. and it's just it's just not good you know well yeah and the, uh, yeah and the other part of that is money you know especially if it's a big hollywood movie or big yeah. you know network tv show or something they'll you know if, if they know it's gonna make some money they'll they'll put it out they don't care you know but I don't know. That's, I don't know. Yeah. The seventies was such a fertile time. You know, there's so many cool yeah. stuff that came out in the seventies and stuff. And uh, you're, you're right. Uh, you're right, Mike. You, you, you guys are both right on in a, and it's like, I don't want to be like the, the guy outside yelling at the cloud, like that whole meme or whatever. But um, yeah. there are some, there are some remakes that I think are reboots that I think are done well. Um, yeah. Some, but yeah. I, so I was going to say this, that. Yeah. I was trying to remember what, what, Jaws was up for best picture and I remember mm. it did not win, but I was like, wow, what was, what was it up against? And I went and looked and that year, the other movies that it went against my jaw, my, no pun intended, my jaw dropped. It was one mm -hmm. flew over the cuckoo's nest, Barry Lyndon, Kubrick. Um, I can't remember the other, the, um, the other ones, but I was like, wow, that is some roster of movies to lose to and some brilliant directors. And then I just try to think about nowadays about the movies that are out. And I thought, wow, that's, that is, uh, it's not like that anymore. It's, it's definitely to, mm -hmm. to your point. It's definitely not like that. And I mean, yeah. you know, some, some things are done well. Uh, evil dead is, a uh, another evil dead franchise is another franchise. I absolutely love. And when I mm -hmm. heard that was going to get remade, I was, uh, man, if there was a, if there was a YouTube back then or that, that I was on, I would have been bitching up a storm before I watched one frame of it. And I actually it thought, wow, they actually did it well. That was really good. Yeah, that, I have nothing to say. Yeah, I've never yeah, that, seen it. That first one, of... the mm -hmm. first Evil Dead remake. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty good too. I agree with you on that. I thought it had its own um, thing too. It was pretty, pretty good. It was well made and stuff. I mean, there is some good reboots, but we, we, if we think about it for a minute, there is so many reboots of so much you can't even hmm. think for a second which ones are good, you know. But yeah, there are some really good ones that's brought something a little bit new fresh to it um i mean even those like 21 jump street movies you know those comedies and stuff you know, when they <laughs> said they were going to make that from a tv show that wasn't that great i mean i remember it as a kid it was it was good but it wasn't like you know and then they they turned those movies out and they were hilarious i mean they were you know nothing of what i thought it was going to be like they didn't even have to call it 21 jump street they could have just made a different you know what i mean and yeah yeah. I thought they were Those hilarious. Are funny were, movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, see, that's a, that's a good one, you know, with, but see, they did a little something different with it. They didn't just make it a that's carbon a, copy, you know, well, that's kind yeah. of the new star Wars movies. You can, they just kind of slap the name star Wars on it, but yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. And kind of remade them, right. They were made the yeah. original trilogy in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I mean, there's some purpose behind it. They didn't execute it very well, but they tried to they tried to reboot it for the younger audience. Really, so the the newer generation, it just well, they want to keep it current with you know stuff, and everything <laughs> needs to stay out of entertainment. It just needs to be, you know, like a piece of art. You know, you you look at it and you have your own feelings about it, and your own this and on that. It doesn't have to, you know what I mean? It's like. I don't know. Everything is so ridiculous. I, I just wish they would keep politics and stuff out of everything and just make entertainment again. I mean, we live in a 
a time where we need some escapism, you know, and not have everything else thrown in the entertainment with it, you know? So. Yeah. I like the, yeah, I agree. The Dawn of the Dead 2004 was a pretty good remake. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was yes, impressed was. with that one. Yeah. It, it's not as good as the original. I, 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 that's, that's Ryan's There's, Jaws. That's Ryan's yeah. Jaws is the original Dawn of the Dead. He loves that movie. Uh, yeah, I love yeah. him. I, I need I to talk was... to Ryan sometime because he likes toys and something. He needs to come on, come on and talk Ryan about toys and awesome. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ryan yeah. One of the one of the cool things about Dawn of the Dead that remake when it came out, it it had the had a Johnny Cash song over the yeah. titles, and I thought that was really cool how they did that, and I just yeah. wasn't expecting it at all, and it it was really good. I mean, I'm not really a big fan of like Land of the Dead and stuff. I'm not sure where those are at exactly. Yeah. But like that Dawn of the Dead. Dead was really good, though. Yeah. When the man comes Last around, Jedi. Mike, that's yeah. what you're talking about. That yeah. song? Yeah, that's that it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was a perfect... I forgot what images they're showing. I think they're just showing, like, shooting up. I can't... I need to watch that again, but I, it's just... Yeah. That was really cool. Still my favorite well, Zack Snyder movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forget it's Jack. Yeah. Zach. Yep. The... Um, well, I lost my train of thought, but they... Um, it, well, there's a difference between... Um, a remake and a reboot too, you yes. know. True. Yeah. 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 So th now Hollywood, it's not like they haven't been, this is a recent thing. They've been making remakes since the beginning of Hollywood. And especially there's a lot of movies that got remade into talkies during the silent era, you know, after the silent era. So we've seen a whole lot of that, like WC fields, like remade, like everything he pretty much everything he had previously made and in silence and he remade them in talkies but sh i mean wc fields you know his voice and he's he was he's a brilliant silent actor but he was you know he's even funnier where you could hear his voice you know? mm -hmm. so yeah. you know things like that, that yeah he had that going for him i think he was even more popular you know talking yeah stuff, so but yeah i think there is a, a difference between reboot and remake yeah, uh, it's it's kind of a fine line, but I think there is differences and stuff. Yeah, and you, and you still got to have some creativity and originality, even to make a reboot or a remake, because you've got to add something to it. You, it. It just can't be. I mean, there's been movies that are just scene for scene remakes. You know, um, I think you remember when they made the Psycho remake in like 1998. Yeah. Um, I think Gus Van Zandt yeah. wanted to make. Yeah. Uh, the remake he wanted to actually do alfred hitchcock's script and do it exactly scene for scene yep shot by stuff. shot yep. yeah shot by right. shot yeah you're right so i thought i mean just the idea was kind of interesting but at the same time it's like well i do that you know yeah but you know i don't know but that's like another franchise we could talk about but you know like it's kind of weird for gus van Zant. Yeah, that was kind of yeah. a, his big studio picture, you know, or something. Yeah. He had been an indie director and stuff. Has so he done long. some good, you know, he done some good stuff. Drugstore Cowboy. and I love that movie, John. Yeah, yeah. that's one of my one movie. of my favorites. Yeah, he did. He did a run of movies and I'm sorry, I don't have them. One of them's called Elephant. And one was called Last Days. And there's a third one. But they're like, they're like kind of a parallel story to real stories or it's almost like a, I don't know if that's the correct way to say it, but like last day is supposed to be kind of this loosely based Kurt Cobain story. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys saw any of those, but they're, they're kind of odd. They were pretty good movies though. I have them on DVD, but I've, I've never looked them up on to see if they even got transferred to Blu-ray, but, but yeah, there, there's three I've of them. them. Yeah. Yeah, let me let me look this up here. I know which uh, one you're talking about. I haven't I haven't seen those though. I do know about Last Days. Yeah, there was one after Last Days. It was Paranoid Park, and then he did Milk about you know Harvey Milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's he did a movie called Gary before Elephants. I don't know if that's part of the trilogy or not, but that I'm looking seem at like the, it might be. Yeah, but yeah, Drugstore Cowboy, man, that's I can. Yeah put that on anytime watches so so good yeah i made a video no recently one's seen that movie of my friends like i would ask them about that for throughout yeah. all the years they're like i've never seen drugstore cowboy and then i'll show the, them that and they think it's because they're like i don't like gus van sant you know because i'll watch some of his newer stuff and i'm like no you should you should really check it out and then they really like it and mm -hmm. i'm like oh it's great it's it's 
I know he's done like my my own private Idaho. Mm -hmm. um, oh God, that's what I was with thinking. Matt Damon and yeah. uh, ben, ben Affleck. What's the um, Goodwill Hunting? Thank Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I wanted to say Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. I couldn't get that out of my head. <laughs> Good, <laughs> Good, Spielberg. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's that movie's awesome. I, I love Drugstore Cowboy. Matt no, Matt oh, Damon's yeah. awesome in that. Yeah, recently I made a video. I haven't released it yet, though. Um, I did a early Matt Dillon movies, and and I, I that didn't even occur to me at that time that he was in, you know, Drugstore Cowboy and stuff. But I made it as early Matt Dillon. So, but yeah, that, that is such a great movie. I need to update. It. I got the old old DVD of it. I need to. And I think I have it on Laserdisc even. Yeah, but they work. Yeah, they work together again in To Die For the with Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Oh yeah, seeing that one—that was that one's pretty. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it since it came out. It came out in '95. Yeah, I, I have remember. that on. Uh, have that on Laserdisc for sure. I don't think I have it on any other formats. For, oddly enough, but no. Yeah, I remember that movie because um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. He just looks you when you see him. When you see him in that movie, you're like, man, how can this guy be a Hollywood actor? I mean, he's pretty he looks pretty rough and i mean of mm. course it's he's playing a role but i mean he looks this like at that time like his facial features and stuff you're like man he's not his brother you know he's definitely he don't seem like mm. his his father's son you know well he was <laughs> he no <laughs> he was a little bit of real life there because i mean he would die not long after that after oh well that's river but i'm talking about i'm talking about oh Joaquin. i'm thinking about yeah oh okay yeah i'm thinking yeah. about river phoenix or something yeah 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 but joaquin he's yeah like like if you see those two together you're like what yeah you know i guess it's totally two different two different acting styles but i mean you got randy quaid and you got dennis quaid so they're kind of the same one you know? you got, <laughs> yeah. yeah what's that yeah. western uh there's a western called i think the long is it the long riders where it has all the brothers real life brothers playing brothers and it. it's like the Carradine brothers, the uh, not the Bridges brothers, uh, but there's like three sets of Hollywood brothers, and they're they're all playing outlaw brothers like Jesse James and and everything. Um, I think it came out in '79. It's a really good movie, good western. I think it's yeah, the Long, Long Riders. I think it's called. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. I, I've not heard of this. You know, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, all the brothers I, all on screen together. Mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. really neat how they did that um yeah. it's it's out on kino blu-ray it's got a pretty good edition it's got a lot of stuff on it for a kino edition it's got a lot of extras maybe i'll pick it up since kino's having one of its uh uh sales it's it's stretch sales like earth day sale mm -hmm. my one friend yeah. said they're gonna have a grandparents day sale pretty soon <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah they <laughs> But but man, I, I they like just picking keep... up stuff at Kino. I got no, I got no issues with them. I'm teasing. Yeah, I can't keep up with them though. They keep releasing <laughs> so many things, and it's like you can't decide. Like I just, uh, my mom bugs me about grandparents it. day, like grandparents day for the last like five years, and I'm like, it's not that I have anything against getting anything from my grandparents. It's just. I'm like, when did this when did this holiday come into existence? Because I don't, as a kid, I do not ever remember it. And then all of a sudden it's something I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every time you turn around, you got to spend freaking money. Yeah, it's I, I, I just picked up from them um, Hard Target 4K, the Jean-Claude mm -hmm. Van Damme flick for under 10 bucks. Remo Williams, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. um, Vampire Motorcycle, which was recommended to me. Um, Real Men, which uh, James Belushi and uh, John Ritter and Sugar yeah. Hill. Oh, yeah. Which I oh yeah Sugar love. Hill yeah 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 that's got Wesley Snipes like, like like under fifty bucks I mean yeah. it's oh yeah yeah I think the most recent Kino I got the uh, Touch of Evil 4K and then I I pre ordered the uh, those um uh for a few dollars more and fistful of dollars I pre ordered those oh, 4Ks cool. um but yeah man they're just they're killing it dude they're just so yeah. many good stuff which thank God they are you know. <laughs> yeah no they're um like, they're doing like, they're doing some they're doing they're, there's there's still a uh, lot of things off there i gotta buy i um, picked this up from them here recently yeah i have wanted to check that out yeah it's a noir so it's gonna be interesting mm -hmm. cool i yeah. kind of get on little uh 
certain actors and things like that. I got some Ray Milland and some of that stuff. I've got a few movies from by him here recently. I picked this mm-hmm. up because it just showed up. But it was like twenty bucks on Amazon, but mm, yeah, I, I didn't own that on Criterion. Does it have much special features on there? Because sometimes that gets me to decide if I'm going to get that one. You know, like. It's, yeah. Sometimes it's the deciding factor for me. It's like if it's got yeah. some good supplements, I'll I'll get it. Yeah, wow. it looks like it's yeah. got good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You got a criterion for under 20 bucks. That's nice. Yeah. Well, it was 20. It was right at 20. So that's, before the sale. Mm-hmm. You you can find them on Amazon every now and then if it's something that's either been out for a while or it says something that's not selling or trying to get rid of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I picked it picked this up as well. I don't Yeah, that's another movie I've been wanting now. Check. Yeah. It's been in my cart for probably yeah. two years. Yeah. yeah, this is a John Farrow. One that other movie, I think it's a John Farrow movie as well. It's a yeah, I think it's like the mid alias Snake Bill. Yeah, or no, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I picked this up on DVD. I haven't got very. I didn't get very much this week. Um, this is a. Uh, Oh, Holy okay. girl, James yeah. Cagney. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I don't think it's one of his big. It's not like a. I think mm-hmm. it's just one of his kind of common movies. You know, just yeah, one of the comedies, average. common comedy. Yeah, I just call them average ones. You know, just they're not great. They're not bad. You know, they're just yeah. good, good entertainment. You know, I did. I did order the Hitchcock the second set, the four K set, but. uh Mm-hmm. I haven't got it yet. So. Which one's in that? Which ones are in that? Um, it's um, I think I'll have to, one I'll have of to them, look it up. I think one of them is uh, it's a couple of his uh, later movies, like his what was his last movie? Uh, I'm trying. I've got the one uh, on the tip of my tongue. I'll look it up here real quick. I'm, I'm sorry. I've 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 looked at it two or three times and I can't remember it. I've, yeah, he's made so many no, it's all movies. Good. I can't remember it. I was just curious. Yeah, no, that's not a problem because. Yeah, I got a few odds and ends this week, but not much. I got a couple of things on pre pre order that's going to be coming in, but I swore I was going in April. I wasn't going to buy anything. I thought I'm going to see if I can do okay. it, and that's when something comes up, man. It pops up like it tempts you to know in, like yeah. it's on sale. Last Famous one, last you got to get it. <laughs> it um. It's- I've it got has a uh, it I has a saboteur. I, I gotta stop. I always say I'm not gonna buy anything, and then like vinegar syndrome. I was like, I'm not gonna buy anything until the halfway to Black Friday sale. And the, two weeks ago, I they put out their partners releases, and I got two movies I never heard of, and I bought them: Inspector mm-hmm. Ike and Game of Survival. Oh yeah, and they had uh, uh Death Wish two came out recently from vinegar. <laughs> I got it. I bought it. Four K. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that looks really nice. I'm yeah. which, um which yeah. one is that? Uh Death Wish 2. Oh, Charles Bronson. Yeah, that's a really oh. nice release. Slip cover and everything. It's really good, cool. Good good movie 4K. I mean, it's I I was like I I have to I have to own it. Mhm. Uh, but yeah. that has been killing it, man. They real for me at least. I'm just saying that some of the Yeah. Well, it's that, wise to do that because once they go out of print and then they go on the secondary market like eBay or something, they're just there's no getting it then because it's just too much. You know, they just go nuts with prices and stuff. So it sometimes you got to do that pre-order, man. So <laughs> so you can get your copy because I bought two but, copies last summer for their last halfway to Black Friday sale. That one of their surprises was a special edition in its case for the two scanner cop movies that i had been mm-hmm. looking for forever and mm-hmm. so i bought yeah. two of them and uh so now you can buy them separately but it doesn't come in the cool little like book shelf case kind of thing they put together. it was it's a beautiful release beautiful presentation mm-hmm. i love it mm-hmm. um and that just went out of print so um i wonder how much you know since i got two extra i mean i got an extra one i wonder i wonder how much that's going to go for oh yeah it, it'll be yeah. i mean that's a good investment if you think about it i mean because it vinegar syndrome one seem like they go out of print quicker. They sell out quicker than yeah. a lot of other labels. And that it, it is a good investment sometimes to buy two and sell one later. <laughs> but you know I'm sure you bought rad, didn't you? 
Yeah, I got rad. Um, no, I, yeah, both one of, of them. Yeah, there was two. There was two different editions, weren't there? One with a slipcase. I can't remember what label yeah. released it, but that's the one I got. No, it's in a steel book, and it's got like a plastic slipcase. Yeah, with some artwork yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah I got um, both. Yeah, but it was just Blu-ray. The steel book was just a Blu-ray edition. It didn't mm-hmm. come with a 4K for some weird yeah, reason. I guess. I guess vinegar syndrome kind of had the, maybe the rights for the 4k and yeah, yeah it was weird because yeah. it, that was a big deal. Like it was coming out on vinegar and then all of a sudden it was out on another label too, which was kind of a, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. So I was like, I got the other, I think it was mill. Was it mill Creek? I, I can't remember what that label was. I'm not near the movie right now, so I can't. Hang, hang on. I have, I don't think I've got the vinegar when you guys, I mean, I wish I did. Hold on. I, I have that release. Let me just, let me go look real fast. Cause now yeah. you've, you've, there might be no in the chat real fast. It's right here. Yeah. Cause I can, Al, I can bring it to my phone. Al was asking Jeff if he, what, how many copies of Jaws do you, do you have? How many do you oh, have, Mike? Yeah. We'll, we'll ask, we'll ask G Cap when he gets back. Okay. Yeah. I actually with Jaws, man, over the years, I've kind of like, like when I got a Blu ray. I kind of got, I sold off my DVD, you know, I was trying to do that. Um, but yeah, I've bought like multiple editions of stuff over the years, just, you know, different editions on DVD and then Blu-ray. And So this is, um, it's, uh, it's Mondo, but this is the one it, it, it is. a steel Oh yeah. And it does have a plastic. I haven't opened it yet. Yeah. It has a plastic, um, it has a plastic slip on it. I got it on yeah. sale like Easter last year on, like on Amazon for like 24 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I, the one I, I got. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a cool package, you know. Well, I think it's cool. Yeah. I love it. Oh yeah. I couldn't remember. I know yeah. it's something with an M. So I mm, would know Mondo. Okay, it's Mondo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many was... uh copies of Jaws do I have? Yeah. So the two VHSs. DVD. Toys. Special DVD. Twentieth one. The um the Blu-ray DVD digital. Four K. So six, six copies of Jaws, two VHSs, no. 4K, the, the two special, the first DVD, the special, or the, the DVD, the Blu-ray DVD, and then the other two DVDs, those anniversary editions. Because um, I got a problem. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm like that with like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, that trilogy, the spaghetti, uh, ah, Sergio Leone. Like I have multiple versions of all different releases, laserdisc, everything. But I think yeah. with Jaws, I have um, I have a DVD, Blu-ray, and a laserdisc. Um, you got that laserdisc, man. Yeah, and there and there's like even on Laserdisc, there's like oh. multiple different versions that they put out over the years. Like there's at least Keep three, it. I believe. Oh, jeez. Three, three or four, if you you know include the first one and stuff. But yeah, there's, you know, it's probably you said you had the beta copy too, didn't you? Betamax. No, I, I said I need I need that in the Laserdisc because the only oh, ones yeah. I don't. I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish. Isn't yeah, there's some special. Laser discs, isn't it? Didn't they release? Is that when the releases it got uh, put on that HD laser disc? I can't remember if it is or not. H. Oh, um, I think I thought it was an MCA one. That's the one. Yeah, I'm there, on. there, there was, but I think they. I, I, I might be wrong about that. But they, there was a Japanese only format. They, they released like kind of right around the end of, kind of right before DVD in the oh, early yeah. early nineties. Um, they had a high definition laser disc format and the, the freaking players were as big as a refrigerator if you know <laughs> they, oh those were they um, were massive yeah uh it starts with an m i think uh yeah gosh, they, they only think. released about 30 titles yeah and they're very very high price still if you find yeah. it. but you also oh muse m-u-s-e yeah. player yeah. you had to have a special muse laser disc player and uh and then they had just so many discs and stuff and they're they're still very high priced and collectible and stuff the machines were like really they were like two laser disc players stacked just about it was they were huge they were just these huge machines but it had to it had to spin the disc at a like it was like triple the speed of a regular laser disc so i mean it was hauling ass inside like if oh, it yeah. if if somehow if the if it the tray come out and it slung it out i mean it would 
it been like a buzzsaw. Yeah, and take your eye I out. I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> some serious, I forget how many RPMs it would turn, like 10,000 RPMs or some crazy like that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they were just, I think, I think they were very popular in Japan where they were made and stuff. And I think, you know, it didn't really, that didn't catch on really at all in America, yeah. I don't think, because Laserdisc could barely hold on, you know, before yeah. DVD and stuff. So, but. It wasn't much better in Japan. What was the, what was their market share in Japan? Like 5% or something like that versus three, yeah. two or two or three in America. It was pretty low. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they really went for that stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, it was kind of hard to get around VHS in the 80s and 90s, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could obviously record with a VHS player, and that was, oh, a, yeah. That was yeah. a big selling point. It really mm -hmm. killed the, it, you know, the VHS coming out basically the same a little. It actually came out a little before LaserDisc you know, for mass market, obviously there was VHS and videotaping machines beforehand, but the, you know, the beta and VHS format didn't come out until like really the late seventies, early eighties. So mm. it's, it killed laser discs. So, yeah. I, I still think to this day too, um, I don't have any, this is just my, like I, my thoughts, uh, no, no concrete evidence to back this up, but I still think to this day, that's why there's so like a myriad of different releases for films, and all that is to basically get us all back for recording things off of TV back in the day and having, you know, SB collections where we didn't like I used to still buy some movies, but I didn't buy all of them. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I still like to collect them either way. But well, I, was, I was much younger, too. I didn't. You know, I was I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't have a job. Yeah, I was yeah. in high school. You know, I can't <laughs> I can't go yeah, out and buy yeah. movies like I do nowadays. But I always think like these companies are getting us back nowadays. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Taping their the stuff man comes off. around. It's <laughs> that's yeah. <all. laughs> they'll 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 get you now. It got me. Yeah, yeah. It, it, got, well, it got me for sure. I, I liked you know I liked recording stuff off TV back then. Like if you had Showtime or yeah. uh, or the Movie Channel or something uh, in particular because they didn't show any commercials. So I would I would copy movies all the time and just have decent copies. You know because they didn't mm -hmm. have commercials. It was uncut. So I thought I was cool, you know, when you're much younger and stuff. And you couldn't afford to go out and buy it and stuff, so. No. No, yeah, I, I couldn't. Pretty... I mean, th there were some I would buy, like, you know, I I'd mow some lawns, you know, to uh, uh -huh. um, the, uh, you know, the the first. It's it's really funny, too. So the first VHS I ever bought was uh, Evil Dead 2 when that came mm. out because I saw that in the theater. And I mm. really liked it. And, um, you know, it was... You know, that, that went and mowed some lawns and b b bought it for twenty dollars from the <laughs> from mm -hmm. the store, and then the next yeah. one I bought was Jaws, the the one I was telling you guys about, the uh, with the black letterbox kind of yeah release. Nice. Yeah, I have to I have to look that up. That that'd be interesting to look at all the different releases over the years, just the packaging of each release, you know, and stuff. Because that'd be interesting to see all that. Because it is it is one of the most you know what do you call it most like put out you know by a company and stuff because that's probably universal's main you know one of their main titles that and like you know you got psycho and stuff like that with universal you know so they're some of their their big movies that's their their name I, for i found it i just i i don't know i mean i don't know how i can share this though it's because it's on my laptop but I actually have a picture of the one that I have with it's like yeah the black letter block it's like all black, and it has the yellow. I mean, are, I had to look at all. There's so many different versions of this VHS. You're right. I'm that's. It's just are you record. in um? Are you actually running? Or are you on YouTube? Or are you in um? Do you have your computer up with um? Well, I'm on, I'm on Streamyard here, here on Stream my phone, and then I have my laptop here with um, Google, and I, and I'm also in the uh, I'm also on our show too. You are, you are you watching on through StreamYard or through YouTube? YouTube. Oh, okay. If you're in StreamYard, you can share the screen, your screen, and with me, and I can oh, put huh. it up. Well, I, I just looked it up too. I, th I think it's the right one. It's it's uh black around the border, right? Yeah, the and there's the yellow okay. around the actual theatrical poster piece of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, just scrolling through here right now, there's like dozens of different editions tons 
Yeah, that's. I mean, that's really what makes collecting cool. You know, it's like somebody might look at you like, uh, why do you have every Jaws ever released? But it's kind of cool. You know, that's what collecting is in, in a nutshell, you know. Um, yeah, we all we all have some, you know, some form of that one yeah. movie that we do that a lot with. So. Yeah. Okay. I am. Um, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, it's uh, was it? Well, no, that was the. I'm looking at the retro VHS clamshell that actually has a Blu-ray in it. Um, they did that version. It's kind of tall, like the old VHS. You would open it up, clamshell yeah. case. Um, I think yeah. I have 16 candles uh, like that, but it's got Blu-ray instead of VHS in it. That looks similar to what you're talking about too. It's got a yellow and orange. Yeah, I wish um I can't I can't I can't show um I I'm in Streamyard but it's not giving me any any way to pull up the menu or I could just I could just share yeah. it with you. Mm. But yeah, it's the one I owned. And you could tell it's like it's like somebody put theirs up and looks like they sliced it in half, they filleted it to show mm. like all in one thing. But yeah, that's that was the one. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. It's upstairs yeah. somewhere. Probably in the same shape that is in except I would never fillet. Yeah. <laughs> never play a box it's an odd yeah. choice yeah that's it's cool there's so much stuff on there of jaws i mean it's yeah some of those early vhs boxes are really neat yeah what is um what is this younger generation what's everybody's obsession with blockbuster because growing up around here we had you know especially where i grew up originally in a smaller town you know we just had independent things and there was some of the independent stores that were really good and then even when i moved to lexington the larger city well, a larger town a city whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. even the more independent stores were always better than blockbuster i, I just never did think mm -hmm. very highly of blockbuster myself and mm -hmm. a personal so i mean everybody's maybe that's a, in some places that is the only option you had blockbuster or hollywood video and stuff like that and they're like they're both it, kind of the same you know yeah did you have a hollywood video no I well, they, Holly, hollywood was i think my favorite overall you know because they yeah. usually just had so much to choose from and i, I don't know I, I like the vibe of hollywood we had a blockbuster in our town but i just i seem like i never went to blockbuster for some reason you know yeah nothing against them, but I seem like I just went to Hollywood and then we had a place called movie gallery also. And they had, yeah. Yeah. And it, okay. it had changed over from something else and it, it finally ended as movie gallery and then it went out of business. But, but it seemed like I always went to um, Hollywood video to get, you know, VHS is to rent and stuff, especially in my, um, like the late nineties and stuff. But yeah, like when I was a kid, like you said, John, it was all these like mom and pop yeah. places and yeah. stuff. And it was pretty cool, you know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, for, for me growing up, I would, um, I mean, that's where I started was all the, the mom and pop stores. Um, I, I was, just, I was just talking to my friends about this yesterday. The, uh, so we were naming all the old places that, I mean, so Blockbuster is probably the most memorable one. Cause it was like, mm -hmm. you know, it was a franchise and it was, just, it was everywhere mm -hmm. and it was all colorful and whatever but i would go yeah. get new releases from there but hollywood video i thought was awesome because i used to get some you know movies that maybe wouldn't you know would be too risque i guess to be mm -hmm. at a at a blockbuster and that's where i would go to the mom and pop ones because you know there, there was a place my, my very first video store in my area was called video frequency i'll always remember that one that was my favorite mm -hmm. um they had everything and then you had like there was a Renaflick was one. There was a few in my area. There was Movie Gallery. There was mm -hmm. West Coast Video. You, so there's Sun Coast yeah. Video. Yeah, Sun Coast. I know. Yep. Um, yeah. I didn't get to a Hollywood Video until I almost in my area until I was in Florida, and that was uh, there was another smaller franchise down there, but there there were everywhere. It was called Ten Thousand Movies, and mm. that place was like a warehouse. They had everything there. Um, wow. So. Yeah, yeah, I guess the obsession with Blockbuster was just, you know, I guess with the, the um, you know, with the generation is, you know, my, my parents would bring me there and I could get like a video game and like popcorn and I don't know, mm -hmm. it was just a little bit different, but um, yeah. I don't, there's not a video store I, I hated, I would say that, like, mm -hmm. I guess no. each served their own purpose. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not saying that I hated the place. I just did, you know, I, I guess it's just a nostalgic thing. Some of these kids didn't have Blockbuster, you know, especially kids born in the last 20 years. They just mm-hmm. don't yeah, understand. I, I, they don't, uh, that generation don't understand hardly what VHS is. I mean, other than through the nostalgic factor, you know, it's like me buying vinyl records and, mm-hmm. you know, 20 years ago, you know, it's kind of that same thing, but mm-hmm. that's yeah, kind I think- of a... Uh, I think Blockbuster is just a, you got the logo and it's easy to attach yourself to. And that's why I think it's caught on like Hollywood video, you know, if you compare the two, it's like somebody's going to go with Blockbuster, you know, if they had to choose a logo, you know, so I I think it's that, you know, and then they had, they've had some, you know, documentaries out the last Blockbuster and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just more, it's probably just marketing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just like a, a McDonald's, I, would rather wear... I guess. Like, if you think fast food, everyone will say McDonald's because of the, the the marketing, like the colors. Like, I mean, there's there's a whole think tank machine behind something that just that causes yeah. that 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 emo- you know that emotion, that reaction, that familiarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But you know, the other people are like, everybody loves McDonald's, but man, I, I love the burgers at Wendy's. I don't know why everybody always talks about McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. Like yeah. one of those kind yeah. of things, I guess, John. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, I agree. I, it's it's. I, I would yeah. much. I, I would much rather wear a movie gallery shirt just to be different. You know, <laughs> a Hollywood video and be like, "What is that?" My my movie gallery was the first one. That actually, had movie posters. I used to get the movie my movie posters there. That movie, oh, yeah. my movie yeah. gallery at least. Yeah. A little trivia question: What was the name of the movie store in Clerks? Ooh. Oh sh. No, that's not the name of it. That was me. <laughs> wasn't it like, wasn't it like Second Stop or something or something that starts with an Quick, S, Quick Stop's the name of the store, but oh, the, yeah. the video, the, the video store is something different. Yeah, I can't. Man, that's a good trivia question. Do you know what it is, John? Or are you asking us if like? No, I know. I know what it is. Yeah, I don't know why I did. I, it just popped in my head. Mm. I was thinking. Mm-hmm. No, that's a good. That's a it's good trivia a, question. It's RST Video. RST. And I don't know what RST stands for, but it's it, it was RST. Yeah. Well, you know, the other day, speaking of clerks, yeah. I, somebody put out a video where it's it's clerks in color. Have you all seen that? I think I saw Mm-mm, it on no. YouTube. I was scrolling. I don't know if yeah. somebody colorized it or it's a legit color version. It Well, it. it it definitely was not shot in color. But. No, it you can tell uh yeah but i don't know what they've done if they've colorized it or not but yeah. it's legit and I oh like, you, you talk about like an official release versus just something somebody threw on youtube or something it, it's so, on yeah. yeah it's on youtube so i don't know if it's like an actual color print that someone's leaked on there somehow or if it's somebody's done it in their basement i don't know what it is but it's I was, that would it you know me for a minute. i i would hate i it'd be interesting just to see but i feel that it would it would kind of ruin the movie Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has that yeah, that's look. like its thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because I mean, if you listen to if you listen to Dave Klein, the guy that shot it, I mean, he really he wasn't a great cinematographer, but it was his first movie. I mean, he's learning, obviously, mm-hmm. and he, you know, he just said, you know, I saw it in color, you know, <laughs> in the in the thing, but you know. So they really didn't, it wasn't like a movie that was, it, the thing is, is it worked good because, you know, the black and white movies, especially towards the end in the forties and early fifties, you know, they were really mastering the art of black and white. And some, some, in some directors in that era, when they were going to color, chose to make their movie in black and white just because the, the effect. And mm-hmm. I thought what they I didn't think it's really that crappy looking in black and white. I mean, it was lower quality because they didn't shoot in like, I think they just, was it shot? It wasn't shot. It, I guess it was shot 35 millimeter. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was yeah. shot 35, but it wasn't shot yeah. on a very good camera. No. But it, um, you know, it looks pretty good, but the black and white effect works in the movie, you know, and some, mm-hmm. you know, you see some. It, it gives a, it gives it almost like a know. security camera look at times. You know what I mean? Like that kind of low yeah. res, you know. Yeah, but I'm pretty. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was filmed on black and white stock. You know, no, it, it, no, it, it totally, totally was it because was. because they didn't have the money for color. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cause sometimes you film on video, of course you can go back and turn it black and white if you want, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. But yeah. it was shot on film. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw that for a minute and I didn't have time to really explore it. And I was like, oh, what, what is this? You know, and it just, it didn't look right. It was just like, eh. I don't I'm so think, used I mean, to, I, th I think, it'd be, yeah, something I'd watch for a minute to be like, oh, let me see that. But I was like, yeah, it's kind of killing. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it, I think, it, to, like you said, Mike, it's the, uh, like the, the uh, security cam, like of a convenience store kind yeah. of. Kind look. of low res yeah. at times. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it has a look. It, it, it's hard to describe. Yeah. It has a, it has a certain look to it. Yeah. Other, it's not like a glossy black and white or anything. Mm -hmm. It's like a, you know. Um, yeah. But may, I don't know. Maybe somebody got bored one day and they just like, hey, what would this look yeah. like? You know, I don't have enough time in my day to come up with stuff like that. But. <laughs> that would be you'd have to put in some. Uh, well, there there might be some programs out there you can actually run in it. In it actually uses like a technicolor process to add color to it but mm -hmm. i don't know exactly how you would colorize it i guess there's some digital programs out there that can, that can do it other well, than that um, it would be a lot of manual work well I've, you know? I've subscribed to some channels where they like take old photos like from the 20s or teens or before that and they colorize yeah. it and it looks really good and i think even yeah. uh peter jackson did that with some footage of uh, some World War One uh, stuff, you know what I'm talking about? Like when he was working yeah. on uh, that one project, that, and he colorized yeah, that documentary. It. Yeah. yeah, and he added sound to it and stuff. But it it, it turned out pretty good, and it's it's kind of creepy in a way because it's like I don't know, it's like a time machine. Just the color itself really changes how how I feel about it. You know, it just looks. Yeah you know well some of the scenes in oh brother where are thou were filmed in black and white and int intentionally and they added the color well it's either they were filmed in color and they stripped the color then recolored everything so everything really sticks out but they mm -hmm. they did it i think they filmed them in black and white intentionally so they could go back and manually color the scene so yeah different kinda, scenes it looked kind of like sepia tone a little bit. You know, it was kind yeah. of brown, had a brownish hue or something to yeah. it, which was, mm -hmm. it's it's definitely got a um, distinct look. Let me ask you yeah. all this, uh, Clerks, have, Clerks being in color. Have you all seen the animated series, Clerks? Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I've so seen bad. some of it, but I haven't, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty good though. But I'll be I'm right back, right guys. Now. I'm gonna yeah. plug right. my computer in before it goes dead. Sure. Okay. I, I, I have it on. Uh, I have it on DVD. I bought it when it when it first came out because I remember I caught a couple of the episodes when it was on. There was like a whole yeah. thing with ABC and all kinds of drama there. I don't I know the story, but um, yeah, I, I remember I caught a couple of the episodes, and so when I saw, and I thought I thought it was good, and uh, but they were moving it around all the time. I could never find it. So one day it just kind of it was in. Uh, Best Buy for like I don't know, very like fifteen bucks or something crazy back then when they released it. I thought like oh, I'll buy it and I, I I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, Kevin Smith was really hot in the nineties. Like he was doing some good stuff and up until that Jersey Girl and then he kind of and Jersey Girl's not terrible. It's got some stuff in it I like and and then I like Red mm -hmm. State. But then he's made some kind of yeah he know, had a. a that new Jay and Silent Bob the, movie's all right. Yeah. yeah, he he had such a run for there for a while. You know, he had to stumble because he was he you know putting them out like Clerks and then what Mall yeah. Rats, Chasing Amy, um, Dogma. You know, mm -hmm. and then and then all of a sudden it was just like I, I thought Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, what was it? Strike Back or what? What was that yeah. one? Um, yeah, Strike Back. Yeah, Strike Back. Yeah. Strike Back. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious back in the day. I like it. I saw I, I saw it twice in the theater. I I oh, yeah. don't I don't often do that. I don't know why. I just I really thought that movie was funny. I went back and saw well, it. Well, I got the oh. reboot and I haven't watched it yet. Jane Silent Bob reboot. I need to watch that. that. That's that's interesting about the reboot because when it came out they played the reboot played in theaters. So I, I went and saw it. It was like one of those fathom events. Oh, but nice. what I didn't know before I went in to see it, it was a double feature, so they played both of them back to back. So I got to see both of them. I got to see the original and then the new one back hmm. to back on the opening night of it. It was pretty cool. 
Oh, yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. I, I did like the new one pretty good. It, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's... Now, now He-Man's abominable, the new He-Man series, but I kind of yeah. have a feeling that, I kind of have a feeling that he might not come out and say it, but I think his name is on it. And I don't think he did a lot. Like, I think the story was already there and probably a lot of the work was already done and they got him to come in and help with some of it and just to stick his bit. name with it. Yeah. Because, because yeah. uh, the revelations is terrible. Yeah, I wonder it, if uh, it, Ryan's watching. Ryan's a huge Mo2 guy. Why it's would, a, yeah. well, I'm too, but I'm not a fan of that, but. <laughs> yeah I, I i had a lot of hope it, for that and then it, it just um, i don't know man it's just like all the behind the scenes you know bs going on around the time all the this and that it just kind of turned me off to trying to get into the series because i'm a huge you know i was a huge he-man fan back in the day and stuff you know? and you know even she-ra to a certain degree yeah don't get me wrong i like the toys the toys that came out for the line i've got most of that stuff and I like the look of the show. It looked good, mm -hmm. but it was kind of that same politics driven into it. And it tell me, it. tell me yeah. about the drama and politics. I don't know anything about this. Tell me. <laughs> well, it oh, started just... what with with a uh, Kevin Smith. Like, what was it? It started with him. He he was like trying to. I don't know. I don't know. John, you may know it better, but it it just all of a sudden there was a just a blowout of just all this behind the scenes stuff before it even premiered, well I think. I think originally an, an article came up originally some an article came up in a just a kind of a normal entertainment about how it was going to be the she the the tila show and not a he-man centric show so uh what are their names there's a there's a youtube channel and they just commented on it, and Kevin Smith blew up their comments. Um, mm, Clownfish yeah. TV, excuse me, their Clownfish TV, yeah. and Clownfish TV just they commented on this article saying, you know, they didn't really even make their own assumptions about the show, and he and he like responded to them and said, no, it's not, it's not going to be Tealish centric show and all this stuff, and and it's you know, and it made a big deal out of it. Well, the show gets released, and it's a Tila centric show. It's it's he man's barely in it you know he he man's gets mm -hmm. killed in the first episode and and whoa what yeah how you kill he man in in the he man yeah. show yeah exactly and then it's and, like, and then it's why you know why and then it then it's basically just the tila adventure and like it's just the, it's just this woman centric thing that's going on in hollywood you know the mcu what we just seen with with uh with the new um Doctor Strange movie, the same crap, you know. It's not a Doctor Strange movie. It's a freaking, it's a Scarlet Witch movie. And it'd been mm -hmm. fine if they just made it a Scarlet Witch movie and, and Doctor Strange could have been in it. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. would you not make a She-Ra movie then? Because mm -hmm. if you wanted, I'm saying if you well, wanted, if you wanted to have a, you know, if you wanted to give everybody the expectation, like, because, I mean, I thought She-Ra was cool when I was a kid. I like She-Ra. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I had yeah. no beef with She-Ra. But, um, but well, yeah. he man like basically sacrifices himself at the beginning, and and he dies, and you know he comes back towards the end in like the the heaven realm, whatever uh -huh. I can't remember what they call it in the heaven realm. But he's not in the rest. Of the, basically, he's basically not in the. I th there's some flashbacks throughout the show, but you know it's just it's just um, a bummer. It's, and I have I, I haven't not... even watched the sec. I haven't even watched the second part. The second part's supposed to be even worse. It gets even. Mm. Works, but I mean, you think about it, it, you got a built in audience for it. Everyone that grew up in the 80s, you know, and are yeah. fans of it, you know, and it's like, why would you disappoint this whole group of people that's been waiting like almost 40 years yeah. to see <laughs> or 30, you know, five years or something to see it? It's just. I going to say, Ryan, I see yeah. Ryan's comment. Ryan's yeah. all fired up. Yeah, OG. they. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what if he's watching, he's got the, the deets on that. Yeah, Kevin had said in previous interviews, like before he was part of the project, that he, I think he got asked about He Man, and he said he um, never was a fan of uh, of He Man when he was a kid, because he was older. You know, he was like old. He's older than us. He's about ten years older than us, so he mm -hmm. really wasn't into it. And 
And then all of a sudden when he started making the show, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm like a big fan of the show and all this stuff. And yeah, I think they just got somebody attached to the project that had a name and a, a kind of a, a, you know, somebody who's a, that scene out there, you know, people can recognize who Kevin Smith is. And I think if they had you know, put his name on it as producer or something that it would give it some more credibility or something. I don't know. It's, it's, I think I wish they would have just been legit, you know, and then change it up later. Or, or like you said, uh, Jeff, just do it, you know, Shira movie. I mean, that, w that would have been completely interesting and awesome, you know, that would, but but some of the toys look pretty good. This is this is a different form of the cyclops and many clops. I think I, I, I'm uh, sorry. I'm, I'm, cyclops I'm, or what's his name? Um, triclops. Triclops. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And uh, excuse me, I butchered his name, Ryan. <laughs> uh, but this is just like this is like after the fall of like basically the attorney of falls in the show and um all the magic kind of disappears so now they're relying on science to push the story along you know and um and like they they basically the bad guys have formed this cult where they're like worshiping like science essentially machines mm -hmm. and this is like they're what they look like. So I've got him dressed up in his robes, mm -hmm. but the, the toys that's look funny. good. Cool. The toys look pretty good. That's why I've been collecting them. They do look good. Mm -hmm. And I like the size of them. And you know, some people didn't like them too much. They thought like the He-Man, the head was a little bit small, but yeah. I, I did like the toys. I, they didn't screw the toys up too bad. So, well, you know, in my opinion, you know, in bringing it back, they should have really brought it back like the fans wanted to see, you know, and then maybe change the story as it went along later on into like where it's at Whoops. now and stuff, you know, because they just went straight to this whole other, you know, different thing that nobody wanted to see really, or they weren't expecting yeah. it. Fans weren't expecting this, you know? Right. Right. So, no, oh, yeah, it's, it's 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 like everything else. They had so much material to build on, like the comic book movies. There's so much history there, but they just ignore it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, changing it and stuff. And they're they're yeah, writing, they're making stuff for themselves, not for the fans. I don't, I don't. It's weird. Yeah, like it's, I make yeah. um, like I, I mean, as a kid, I I owned like every Masters of the Universe toy. Like I, I loved it. I, I even like the freaking mm -hmm. Dolph Lundgren movie. I don't care what anybody says. I love it. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's fun. It's, it's got I'm, its I'm fans. A, I'm a He-Man fan, sure. but I just I had a feeling yeah. that like that I remember because this is actually funny. Uh, Ryan is who's commenting. I when him and I first started talking, I remember that's one of the first things I saw. He was he did a podcast on it, and that it might be Tila. Show. Like I, so, I think some of these things you guys are talking about now are starting. I'm starting to remember them. Um, but okay. I think that's why I stayed away from even trying to watch it because I thought, man, I don't. If this is gonna, I don't want anything like ki killing He Man on me. Literally, I know that mm -hmm. they killed off He Man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what Fist I'm though. thinking. Like they should have just left it alone altogether, or just brought it in later on if it was going to be a series. You know, it's like they just unfolded it. You know, like that, and I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of typical of just I don't know. well for the shira they made a shira reboot cartoon it was the same way it was I, I haven't even watched any of that but it's i've heard a lot of people talk about it it's pretty terrible as well yeah um, i think there's gonna well, be a live action not not my opinion like i said i haven't Wait, seen the live it that's not my opinion I think no it's uh, made or it's coming out soon yeah. or something yeah that's what that's what ron just said he said mm -hmm. it was in production live action which you know that might be better you know i don't know i'll give it a shot well but but like um the problem with the m you know i'm, I'm sorry i say mcu but i have no problem with the female characters but the problem is is they're making all of them like o op they're all overpowered like they're making all like you know captain marvel her powers are way she's way more powerful than she was in the comics scarlet witch is way more powerful which, you know scarlet if you haven't seen the new movie i won't talk any more about it but i um, saw it i actually really liked it yeah it's pretty yeah. bad but i haven't seen it so, yet but yeah 
I think but, I think it was uh, Sam, Sam Raimi uh, wanted to make Evil Dead Four, and he um, yeah. he, <laughs> he 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 tricked them into making it by calling it <laughs> Doctor yeah. Strange. Too. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm just I'm just glad to well, see Sam Raimi out there doing something cool. Big. Well, you know, that's big what's budget, disappointing about it. There, that's what's disappointing. I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I, I was just saying, I'm, I'm glad to see Sam Raimi out there doing something big named, you know. What's what's disappointing kinda, about it? You know, low profile for a while. Because what I, I'm sorry, I keep talking over you, but what's disappointing about it is like there's not much of his stuff in it. That's the problem. Like, like mm. he, I think he came out in an article just recently after the movie came out and said that he didn't, um, a lot of his stuff didn't get in there. See, they went back and reshot like six weeks of the movie, which for that kind of movie anymore, that's like, I think they say they reshot like 80% of the movie. Without him? I don't know with or without him, but, yeah. but huh. like they, yeah. uh, I think it was going to be a darker movie. What I want to see is a rated R Doctor Strange movie. I want a Doctor Strange mm -hmm. movie. It's actually a Doctor Strange movie that does something. He does mm -hmm. nothing in the movie. He does nothing. He doesn't even open the. He doesn't even open the gateway to the different dimensions. They got to use freaking America Chavez for that fucking worthless character. I was disappointed yeah. that Tom Cruise did not show up as Iron Man. <laughs> as that, as as yeah. what was as what was rumored. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a sad moment when you know yeah. we were gonna lose Iron Man because I, I think overall he was probably my favorite over the years as far as the. But uh, but, but you, you know, know, but Wanda in the movie she's like OP. You know, she's just overpowered. Like she can do all this. There's no limits to what she can she can or can't do. Like she if she just thinks something, and then there's inconsistencies throughout the movie about what she can or can't do. Like some scenes she just thinks somebody out of existence, and then the next scene she's fighting, you know, you know, fighting Captain um, Captain Carter by hand, by hand to hand combat. Why can't you just think you're out of existence? You're that powerful, supposedly, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Come on, mm -hmm. that's fair. You know, yeah. Yeah. and then I like how she killed all the, she killed everybody in the order of their patriarchy. Whenever she kills like Reed Richards and mm -hmm. all, she kills all the men first and then she, the, the women had to fight her, you know. Yeah. And Dr. Uh, Strange don't even fight her at the end of the movie. She kills herself. Yeah, we, we do need a rated you know, R Marvel. I mean, what Deadpool wasn't I part of that. I 100% agree with that. Yes. Yeah, De Deadpool wasn't hmm. part of that whole that yeah. round of movies, right? It was kind of separated a little bit. I wish my son was here. You know, he's an expert at all the Marvel things and stuff. But yeah, like we had Deadpool, you know, it was R rated. It, it was different. It was funny and it was great. You know, it was good and so but i think they need to mix it up a little bit you know because if they're gonna oh. change stuff so dramatically you know it's like go all out and do you know do something with it i don't i don't know it's kind of a but, mess man well they you know I, about I, a horror movie a hundred percent like a superhero uh horror movie yeah. and i mean i think with brightburn i think that's why i tell people that I actually enjoyed that because i feel like they actually yeah. went for it with that, even mm, though it might not yeah. be the best movie. That's something mm. like that to where, yeah. I mean, and the boys in a sense, or I don't want to yeah. say it's horror, yeah. but it's almost like the, that whole yeah. bad side, of, which is, it's a great series. I can't wait for the third season to come out. Um, what was the, uh, I, what was I would the one agree. That bombed? What was it? Morbius? Didn't that bomb pretty bad? Was oh it? God, I forgot that even came out. Yeah. He was a vampire. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that, that like really stunk. I don't. I don't know what what happened with that. That was a you dropped the ball I, on that one. I didn't even end up going seeing it. I was thought about seeing it, and I didn't see it. And then, I don't yeah, know. it was in and out of the theater quick. So. Guys, now, you just blew my mind because I was curious to see it. Uh, I traveled for work. Um. Wow. Did I? It's, it's already out of the theaters, huh? It's already gone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think it, I think it came out in April. I, I mean, April went it's by in and out? quickly. It's, it's, yeah, it was, yeah. I, think, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't quote me, but you know, it, I think it is. It's yeah, pretty sure it is out of theater. I mean, I like the whole concept of Morbius. You know, that whole but, ideal, but it just didn't 
you know, or it is Morbius, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But um, as far as, except for Spider Man, I would agree that probably Doctor Strange is the best, the best um, Disney made MCU MCU movie in the Phase mm -hmm. Four so far. It's better than Black Black Widow. It's better than Shang Chi mm -hmm. and uh, the Eternals, which are horrible. Those two are just terrible. But Shang Chi well, is. I, uh, I, I actually went to see that. No, uh, no good. Huh? I didn't like it. No. I heard it's I'm looking forward. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to well, the new Guardians of the Galaxy when that comes out. Well, the Eternals just isn't. You know, I mean, I knew a little bit about them. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not much more, much higher up than a normie when it comes to comic books. But I, I knew the Eternals, but I didn't know a lot about them. But there's so many people that have no idea who the Eternals were, and then on top of everything, trying to shoehorn them in after you have you know after the events of thanos and all that stuff you try to shoot them in and say well all these events of the avengers have went through and these big space attacks and they didn't intervene or anything like that in there you know all this stuff i know they try to explain it away in there but it's still bull crap you know because the turtles are actually they're supposed to be the in the store in the original comics are kind of the origins for the you know their origins for the mutants on earth that's where they kind of come from and i don't think they're mm -hmm. using that that line of logic at all yeah. I, I have a lot of problems with the mcu since um since disney took over really but mm -hmm. they 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 made a few good movies and then they just went downhill i don't i don't I, know I well, it's do the same like, thing um, with star wars yeah I like I like the um like Mike said I, I'm interested in the new Guardians I'm also I can't wait for the new Thor to come out too I really want to see oh, that yeah. too I thought Ragnarok yeah. was that's awesome. gonna be different yeah 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 I hope so well, I don't know I, hope so. I, I don't you know it, they need yeah. something though they need something to kind of kick it in the pants again and kind of get it something they're they're not gonna go anywhere a little bit you know it's to me it's like after like around the time of uh uh what you McCall you just mentioned it um. Black Widow around that time. It seemed like stuff kind of dipped a little bit for me personally. Like, you know, like it's like nowadays I'm not looking forward so much to the series, you know, the movies as much as I was, you know, but I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's just me. Well, at least people are going back to the theaters right now. The theaters have been yeah. pretty busy lately. I'm, I'm glad to see that. I did enjoy having empty theaters there for several months. You know, I did enjoy that, but I'd rather see them full and making money than and staying in business instead of going out of business. So, yeah. I yeah. it was nice yeah. to have your own private theater, but at the same yeah. time, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody's got to keep these yeah. lights on, and it's not just you know not one. Yeah, person. I went in some of those days, and I was like, I don't know how they're even open. This is you know because mm -hmm. it's very expensive to for those theaters to pay their rent or. Because a lot of them pay rent, you know, they rent the building, somebody builds it and they rent them, and they're like ten thousand dollars a month or twenty thousand dollars a month, depending on where what area of the country you're in, you know, and they're very expensive, mm -hmm. so they have to be making they got to be filling those seats up daily. So I was like, I'm impressed that you're even open right now, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been going to so many uh guys since um, I would probably think uh, since like Spider Man Far From Home, that was the first one. I saw, yeah. and, and John, I think I said this on the last call to collectors. I couldn't wait to go see another movie because the last one I saw before the pandemic was freaking Fantasy Island on Valentine's Day with my wife. And I'm like, that's the last movie I ever saw in the theater. I got to get rid of that. It was two years. Um, <laughs> but I saw so many movies now. I'm almost thinking like, I've uh, how many movies I've just seen um, this this the past couple months alone? I wonder if I should get that. Uh, like, do, do you guys interested in something like that? Like the all you can go see movie? past they have unlimited movies i wonder if that's any good i just don't know anybody that has it yeah well, who offers that like cinemark or um i i go to regal a lot so i know regal has okay. one okay yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we have a regal um i've never i've never purchased one uh because you you kind of got a I don't know it might I don't know it, it might get me to the theater to see some movies I might not normally mm -hmm. see I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if I have to well, drive to Lexington I have to drive the town over which isn't but 15 minutes but the way gas is getting I don't you know 
I can't be going. It's, it's I can't probably, go over. I can't go over there like three times a week to see movies. So I do yeah, have a probably, cin- I, I'm sorry, John. No, go ahead. I have a Cinemark oh. here in town too, but I don't. You know, I, yeah. I go there too, but. I was going to say it's probably one of those things. If you see more than say two movies a month, then it would probably justify you know a membership. You know what I mean? Like if you go to the movies a lot, then that would be a good thing to buy. You know, package or something. You know. Yeah, like I just like I said, I see on my credit card all the movies that you know all the charges from Fandango or Regal, and I was kind of like, man, if this is like twenty dollars or 22 dollars over a month i'm like i just i paid that alone for one ticket so Mm -hmm. maybe and i'm uh, john i totally get what you're where you're coming from because if i had to go out of my way somewhere um yeah uh, my uh my job i have now is kind of like hybrid remote and home so i'll sort of (laughs) kind of pass the theater i was go to um on the way to work and you know if i wanted to go see like a brand new movie too that you know say it's like a wednesday afternoon on the way home from work it's probably not going to be crowded i I would think so i don't know i just don't know anybody that has it like yeah is it is it easy do i have to wait to get there to the movie to scan can i you know can i book it ahead of time i just i don't know it sounds familiar online either yeah it sounds familiar like there there has been something like that i'm I'm not really. Yeah, I I remember it. They they used to offer it really heavy before the pandemic. It was they mm-hmm. really pushed it, and then it kind of I haven't noticed them advertising it since. I guess because there's just not been as many movies in the theaters here recently, so they have nothing to push. And and it and man, my theater that my Regal, I went to see. Uh, that's where I went to see Doctor Strange, and um, I went to see the IMAX there, and um, they uh. They must have been short on staff. They didn't even have anybody there checking tickets. I just, you could have, if you really were skeevy, you could have walked in without even paying. If you could, you know, figure out where people were, you know, where they're not sitting at, you could just walk in wherever you wanted to. Because they only had like one line open, one line open for concessions. It was backed all the way to the area where they take the tickets. Mm-hmm. And um, the, at least the way mine's configured, they're all configured differently. But, and, um, you know, I didn't even get to go, and I usually like buying, like, those collector, the collector, they had a nice, the collector 10 for the Marvel movies, the the popcorn yeah. bucket, yeah. and the cup, I always like buying that, I know it's expensive, but I, I usually collect those for all of them, and I didn't even get to see if they had them, because the line was so long, I just had to go mm-hmm. into the movie, and I was there early, I was there nearly 15, 20 minutes early, and I was like, screw the line, mm. Yeah, I'm not even dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, then, I remember yeah. before the pandemic, I can't remember the name of the company that was doing it with AMC exclusive. And my wife and I were thinking about getting that because I thought it's kind of, like, kind of like I'm telling you guys now. It's like it's almost like around the same price as going once. But it was it was weird to where you had to go to the movie theater, hope it wasn't sold out. And you booked your your you know, you could get sit in the like all the way down in the front if it's sold. So there was there was no way to uh, do it now how they have that assigned seating like you're, you're getting on a plane. Uh, yeah. Um, something like that though might get me get me go to go back more, especially because I have yeah. I'm super addicted to freshly popped popcorn and oil. They keep raising the price, and I keep paying it just like I do for all of these movies that come out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. I, I I just wanted to see other people's thoughts. I've just always been curious yeah. about that because I think it's yeah. kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, but before the pandemic, we went to the movies a lot, like every month, you know, and stuff. And my kids have gotten a little bit older and they their habits have changed and stuff. And the, the pandemic really changed our how we go out and do things, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we've seen a few movies since. But. Um, but yeah, because we used to go all the time yeah. back back in the day. Yeah. Well, things are getting more expensive too these days. Inflation, gas prices, mm-hmm. all that factors in. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's me, why. Guys, there's there's times where I'll straight up, if there's a movie coming out, like uh, I'll say, you know, let's say Doctor Strange Two is out. Hey, you yeah. can go for twenty five dollars. You can you can order it like on demand, like during the pandemic with Bill yeah. and Ted. Man, there's so many times I would I wouldn't even think twice about. It. I'm like I ain't going anywhere. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just going to stay here and yeah. buy it. So, um, but mm-hmm. it's, yeah, yeah, I guess uh, things, see what you were saying, Mike, a lot of behaviors have been affected. 
So mm-hmm. well, as soon as it really kind of opened up in in my area, I started going to the theater. I went started going back. I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared during the pandemic really, but the theaters were closed. Yeah, a lot mm-hmm. of my like my that Regal I saw, but it was closed forever. I, I thought it was going to be closed permanently, and it's like one of my favorite theaters. And mm-hmm. and I started slowly going and see them again, probably the first of this year, and mm. maybe yeah, a little bit uh, at the end of last year, a little bit then. But you know, it's just kind of well, well, like you said, uh, you have to you know drive to the bigger city. That's what we were doing back in the day. We would have to drive about forty miles to the you know, the big theater that's got the recliner chair and all that stuff. Yeah. But uh, recently our town uh, got a, built a theater that's got the chairs and the, you know, it's got the natural popcorn, like you were talking about. It's, it's really good. So now we really only need to drive like five or 10 miles. And so we're saving some gas and stuff and they're, yeah. they're getting all the same movies. So, you know, that's been a, a plus on our side of things, you know, as far as going. So. It's yeah, before gas before gas was high, I used to drive to Lexington all the time to go to that Regal. It was just when I lived in Lexington, it was my favorite one of my favorite theaters because they they closed like Cinemark. They opened like one big new Cinemark theater, and they closed a bunch of the little ones. They had one one theater it was called Woodhill, and it was like the first theater in Lexington to to. Um, to have the stadium seating they they actually retrofitted mm-hmm. it it was originally just a big gigantic regular seated theater and they went back in one summer they went back and retrofitted it too and it was like the first one around with the stadium seating so i, I went there mm-hmm. for years and they just up and closed it out of, out of nowhere mm-hmm. and they and i think i read an article i know you got to get off here jeff here in a minute but i, I read an article where they were talking about the reason they closed it was because the profits had dropped but you, the the profits were I don't know if the profits but the earnings were just nuts. It was just in the hundreds of millions of dollars, and they had dropped off by a couple percentage points. They say, "Oh no, we got to close it now. It's not making as much as it used to." <laughs> and it was like this astronomical amount of money they brought in yearly. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not yeah, saying that was all profit that. because the because the theater business is it's an it's got a large overhead because of the. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, well, some of the, yeah. some of the chain ones probably yeah. did good, you know, just cuz they were chain, you know, they could hold on a little longer. Well, it was it was a Cinemark. Oh, okay. Yeah, there there used to be like in Lexington when the Cinemarks came in, they built a Cinemark here in here in Richmond. It was in the Richmond Mall. Then in Lexington they built like three Cinemarks and they were in different parts of towns. And then there was still some existing, there was a South park theater, which I, I know this don't mean anything to you guys, but there's one called South park and there's North park. And they were like little, like they had like two or three screen theaters. You mm-hmm. kind of seen back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. And I always remember North park. That's where I seen the transformers movie at back in the eighties. And, um, and I remember, I always remember South Park because I remember seeing, I remember seeing Pulp Fiction there in the theater when it came out. Mm-hmm. Of course, I've seen other movies there, but some movies really stand out. Mm-hmm. And I think Did the they, last uh, movie they, I saw, the last movie I saw at South Park was, I think was Hustle and Flow. So I remember that for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, that one theater in Lexington, the one that really shows older stuff, was it that, is that the Lexington theater the, which one the is kentucky that? the kentucky kentucky yeah did that ever open because i heard it was still closed or something yeah i think it's back open now but i haven't been to okay. it but they yeah. they run a lot of old movies there they used i think they probably have their summer movie kind of mar- marathon that they show mm-hmm. like an old movie a different old movie each week and stuff yeah See, back in the day, back when I was in school and you know, younger and lived around campus and stuff, they used to have a they used to have a midnight movie like on Friday night and Saturday nights, and they would play mm-hmm. this like older. I'm pretty sure we went to see like Ghostbusters at midnight, and you know those they brought like out Rocky, prints like that, Rocky Horror or something. Yeah, but it was always something different like that. You know, like law. They I remember going seeing Lost Highway there at midnight and things like that. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wow, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've wanted to go there and check it out. And so we had the Louisville Palace in Louisville 
uh, which was built in 1927. So it's one of those grand palaces from the, you know, from a long time ago, you know, it's all been restored and everything. And every summer they were doing like those, you know, summer, they would show monster, the monster movies, universal and stuff or Alfred Hitchcock or something. They haven't done that in years. So I don't know what's going yeah. on with that. Cause it's a really well, nice theater. Well, yeah. fellas, we're about 10 minutes over two hours. Um, I think Jeff's got a live stream coming up a, in just a few minutes it's it's a um it's it's recorded i just i have it set up as a oh, premiere it's uh okay. okay my screen oh, okay. factory thing yeah. so it's it's all good <laughs> oh okay yeah okay. I, yeah I thought you I that's I, why i kept that's why i kept saying that. i thought you had to leave i, I apologize oh well, no yeah i think i did a, a, a remember that too so i think I, I might check it out too so yeah i don't oh, think it's uh, very long i can't remember earlier jeff you're asking about that hitchcock collection yes um, it has the saboteur, shadow of doubt, the trouble with Harry, Marnie, and family plot. I haven't mm. seen family plot. I've seen the rest though. That's yeah, I've I got the. About. I think all those are on the the larger Blu-ray set. I've I've seen them, but yeah. I've seen so many yeah. Hitchcock movies. Uh, certain ones stand out to me, and some don't. So, but mm. I'm looking forward to the 4K transfers because the the birds and some of those movies look great transfer it over yeah. so yeah that's cool yeah what's your favorite hitchcock movies guys let me think here oh man that's a hard one um it's like almost in period. <laughs> you kidding. got like the you got the you got the ones in the 30s where he did in you know in england that which are like the lady vanishes and stuff and then you got the 40s and 50s and stuff and 60s he's got all these different right. periods and stuff Mm -hmm. uh, I would. I don't know, man. It's one of them's one. right on the tip of my tongue. I, it's a fuck. Hang on, just. I like I like North by Northwest a lot. I that's can watch mine. that. Burn that's because of, I know, you know some people would probably think it's Psycho, which is an awesome movie. I love Psycho. Yeah, but North but by it's Northwest too easy. is so damn entertaining. I like it. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, movie. everybody mentions psycho and it's like yeah i love the psycho but it's like man he made some other really good movies too but yeah it's got the bernard herman score doesn't it? it's really mm -hmm. isn't it yeah it kind of yep. jumps out at you yeah. yeah that's pretty good i yeah i like that one um i mean it's not a horror no. kind of you know mm -mm. flick or whatever i mean like the i mean I, I, all of his movies are fantastic don't get me wrong but um, yeah. I remember when I saw North by Northwest that, you know, it's, I think it's like a little over two hours, I believe. Um, yeah, it's around two hours. Yeah. And I was just, I just thought it was, a, it's great mystery. I like mysteries. Um, mm -hmm. Great mystery. Uh, it's, I don't know. I just, I liked everything about it. I liked the characters. I liked, I liked everything. About it. I thought it was great. Mm. The action yeah. in it was like a myriad of a whole bunch of different kind of genres, I feel. Yeah. Like, I, could, I couldn't, I couldn't find the laser disc. So mine's. No, notorious that's my favorite one notorious oh yeah yeah that's a good that's one good. see there's too many man i just can't, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't decide. I was looking for my criteria and i couldn't find it over there but um as soon yeah, as i got good, over to that's a good release that one yeah as soon as i got over to my stack i couldn't find i, I remembered it yeah, like uh, yeah, no, notorious is one of my favorites. I'm pretty sure I have it on. Oh, um, I'm pretty sure I have it on Blu-ray here somewhere. But what what's the one uh, before Dial M for Murder? Uh, what's the one? Um, mm. where they do the uh, the murder for each other or something. What what is it? The two guys. Uh, gosh, I can't think of the name of it. I can't remember. Uh, you know what I'm talking about though, right? Uh, strangers on a train. No, is it strangers on? No, maybe. Yeah. I can just look this up. I don't know why. I think it is Strangers right on the Train. Yeah, I like Do you that have one. that, uh, Mike, do you have that set, that BPI set that came out like last year, I believe, or a year, a year or two ago? That's like all of his like real early, his real early uh, British films. No, I haven't had a chance to get those. I mean, I have an older yeah. set from back in the day. You know, it's one of those cheaper sets you, you could get in bulk you know but they look really yeah. good though they don't look that bad but um uh, yeah, yeah. They, he's they've restored a lot of his his british you know movies his that period of time and stuff and yeah and then uh the lodger that criterion it's a one yeah. of his silent movies I, i've never checked that out i like to check that out because it has yeah. something to do with jack the ripper or something like that so it sounded kind of i haven't yeah. seen yeah. this a silent movie. Yeah. yeah 
Yeah, Strangers on a Train. I think that's what it is. Yeah, Strangers on a Train. That's I like that. It's that's that's it's before North by Northwest, but I, I kind of like that yeah. period. I think I like the fifties period pretty well. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed North by Northwest. That that might have been one of my earlier introductions to him you know, for the most part, except for maybe Psycho. Everybody knows Psycho and the Birds, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I think. I think North by Northwest is what I it uh I what made me really get interested in Hitchcock. Yeah, I I would be you know. curious to see the 4K of the birds because you know how the special effects are in it. You can kind of kind of it, it look it has a certain look to it. You know, I wonder if it would yeah. improve on it or something. It has a very distinct score. You know, with the the bird sounds and yeah. So I'd, I'd be in, I'd I'd like to watch that. Yeah, yeah, it looked pretty good when I watched it. That's one of them I did watch in 4K. Mm -hmm. I think I watched yeah. that in Rear Window, and they both looked really good. Yeah, it Rear it window. seems like I got that one Blu-ray yeah. box set like two years ago, and it's like, man, now I have to rebuy them all on 4K now or something. You know, it's like so I'm kind of I'm yeah. kind of dragging, kind of to getting this back, like, like to get yeah. this back from recording you know, on TV to getting this back. <laughs> yep. No, I think you got a theory there, man. I think that's that could be something. You never know. I just, yeah, I, I just like, think. Uh, well, I, mean, well, I have that original. <laughs> <laughs> they can track have, us on our phones yeah. and watch us through our TV. Use <laughs> this about or whatever it is yeah. now. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> so I like yeah. collecting yeah. movies. So if they're gonna keep putting yeah. them out, I'm just gonna keep buying them. So. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Buying too many, though. Don't have time to watch all of them I'm buying. I'm starting or to... space, which has become a real issue with me lately. This is yeah. um, this is mm. concerning. Need to get another yeah. shelf. Yeah, this shelf behind can't... me I, I recently bought, and it's probably three quarters full now, which you kind of get like, oh, crap. It's not going to fit. It's not all going to fit there, but <laughs> I want to yeah. see the rest of your stuff. I know you got a bunch, you got a bunch of laser discs too on these days. And stuff. Yeah. I need, I need out. to do a video. I've been trying to do that where I can just show off laser discs. Cause I got, yeah. man, I got a bunch of laser. I probably have 500 laser discs. I would say yeah. it, it doesn't sound like a lot, but man, you know, laser, they like record albums. So they take up yeah. a lot of space. I yeah, would love stuff. to see that. I think that's cool. Hey, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to, to do those. that. I've been trying to do that for two years. I just keep forgetting about it. Yeah, I keep going through mine, and I forget what I... I bought so many laser discs at once, just from... I would go to stores and buy them in bulk. I just forgot what... A lot of things that I bought, and I forgot how cool mm -hmm. some of the stuff... And I bought a lot from... a lot of bought, I bought a lot through eBay and stuff like that. And I, mm -hmm. Actually, uh, he was... Uh, Jeff was talking about the Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I actually have that on Laserdisc. It was like really hard to find. I think I ordered it from a guy in France, oddly enough, because oh, wow. they're like yeah. they're kind of rare the copies. I, I believe I don't know yeah. how rare they are, but yeah. But some of that late nineties stuff, whenever they were starting to come out on uh, when the DVDs started coming out, they started kind of they weren't making as many laser disc prints. They started putting them on DVD and not even putting them on laser disc. So. Some mm -hmm. of those titles at the like in the late nineties, early two thousands were kind of hit and miss on Laserdisc. Yeah, one one of the best lot I got a lot sell once. That there was a guy in Indiana. I think his brother passed away or something, and he had a, a storage shed um, full of laser discs and like movie memorabilia, like toys and stuff. And he was selling the laser discs and he had about literally about a thousand laser discs. And I worked out a deal with them and I think I got them all for like $300 or something. And, um, I ended up like yeah. flipping a bunch of them. So I made, I made my money back like three times on it. Plus I had a bunch, he had like all these criterions from the eighties and nineties and he, he had really good taste and stuff. I couldn't 300 bucks I mean, for a thousand laser discs. Yeah. yeah. It, it was That's probably awesome. a little un. Yeah, he was just trying to, he needed to get rid of all this stuff because it he had crates and crates and stuff. So he was like, I got to get rid of this stuff, you know, uh, <laughs> settle his estate or something, you know. And I was like, hey, you know, and so I flipped a bunch of it. And plus I had a bunch to keep. And it, it was, a, that's like one of those once in, once in a blue moon deals that you come across. And 
I'll probably never come across that again. So, but that was really cool. God, yeah, that uh, I remember seeing the picture. You you're familiar with that laser disc. What's her name? Uh, laser that girl that does laser disc. Oh, uh, uh, Maxine. Maxine, Maxine the laser laser disc queen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember seeing a picture on Instagram she posted once, and she had went and bought like it, it was literally like it looked like a eight, like a four by eight trailer, and the whole it was mm. completely filled with laser discs she had bought from somebody. Yeah, she finds yeah, she, all kinds of stuff, man. She's a big reseller, uh, though. Yeah, yeah. She's out of L.A. and she yeah. she's gotten all kinds of like uh, laser discs, like signs and shirts and real stuff, like from stores. And and yeah. she finds these huge lots, man. It's crazy. Yeah, but she's really cool. She's worked out some really cool deals for me in the past and yeah. stuff. So I've never dealt with her, but um, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think she's got yeah. a website, Hollywood Laser. Yeah, yeah. I used to see, I don't know if those guys still do it. They used to get together and have like a uh, doing like we're doing talk, but talking about laser discs. So, yeah, I think they still do it. Sam yeah. Hatch and some of those guys are really cool. Yeah. I see the yeah. Jaws ones are for sale and they're very affordable. Several of them. Hmm. Betamax. A little more that's, scarce. That's pretty hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious. Let yeah. See, my yeah. jaws copy mike it looks like yours but it's not the box set it's just i think it's the double disc set but it's not mm -hmm. the it's it's the the folder the yeah the one that opens up yeah universal came out with this whole series of these it's called the signatures collection and yeah. i also have a box like this of 1941 the other steven That's spielberg cool. movie mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's pretty cool uh, the only thing is it's in the faster speed so you got you know, you got to flip the disc more, you know, I think they're, I think it's in oh, CAB. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, but, uh, but yeah, it's really nice. I mean, it's, you know, pretty cool, but it's basically everything that's on like the first release on DVD, you know, big one that came out on DVD. It's basically the same yeah. stuff, yeah. but it's cool. Yep. I did not find Jaws, but I found Evil Dead, the first one. Guess how much it is used on eBay? How much was this? The VHS, uh, beta, beta, max. beta. Oh, uh, I would say $500, 80 bucks. Uh, I guess, John, you were closer, $400. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah, like the price Some is the right. Other ones are very doable, like, I mean, they're like mm. 20 bucks, 30 bucks. I mean, if you're into, you know, I mean, if it's mm -hmm. you know, just to collect stuff, but I was like, 400 bucks, like, wow. yeah, that's. Is it like I, still I just, sealed or something? You know, I'm a you know I'm generally a pretty you know pretty much a supporter of capitalism, but sometimes I feel like eBay is a little bit gets into the crony capitalism side of things. The because it's a secondary market, and truly and technically you can do whatever you want to on the secondary market. It's just yeah, you know, I just don't like how things are handled sometimes, especially. But yeah. you know, it's whatever. Well, sometimes people, it's the, like the reason it exists is because there's people out there who pay for it. You know, they'll pay out their ass for something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like a question of how much do you want it? You know, how bad do you want it? You know, yeah. and stuff. And sometimes it's like, you know, when you're on your phone at like 2 a.m. one night and you can't sleep and you're like, oh, uh, OK, I'm going to buy this. And then <laughs> you're just like, I don't know. It's it, I, I don't know if I could buy that, even if I was the biggest fan of it. I don't yeah. know if I could. I would, uh, yeah. Kick I'll, I'll tell you this to to that extent of uh, you know we're talking about now with eBay and when I was remember I was telling you guys earlier about like Scanner Cop, uh, my friend uh, was just telling me this past weekend that um, so you saw Vinegar Syndrome's gonna release Texas Chainsaw Massacre two on mm -hmm. in four K, mm -hmm. so um, a couple people have actually talked to me off of buying that for like one hundred and thirty dollars the Blu Ray the real nice Blu Ray that um, Screen put out which I really wanted for a while. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I waited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those things were up probably like $400, $500 on eBay. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to get that. But my friend told me when the Scream Factory one came out, right before it went out of print, he bought one on eBay and it was still going to be like, he was still overpaying for it. I believe he was paying like, if it was 20, say it was $25, the Blu-ray. It was, he was paying like 50. And he was like, oh, I, I get it. It's about to go out of print. 
Well, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, the guy wound up canceled. Once it did officially go out of print, the guy um, refunded him the money. He was like, oh, sorry, man. I, I, I was going to buy it from Scream Factory, but they went out of print, so I don't have it. Like, it was, well, some bullshit, whatever. And then he found yeah. out like a week later, the guy was selling it for $130 or something. I'm like, I, I don't know the, the rec- exact prices, but it was something yeah. crazy. And I'm that's like, happened oh, to man, me. See, that's slimy. Once you make a deal, a deal's a deal. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's happened to me before. Somebody's backed out of it at the last minute. You've already paid really? for it, you know, and they're, and they're just like, we'll refund your money. It's like, ugh. That so I think so they dumb. realize it at the last minute, though. Sometimes you can get lucky on eBay. Um, John, last week, were we talking about those Jack Nicholson movies uh, uh, by Monty Hellman? Remember we were yeah, talking about Whirlwind yeah. and the Wind yeah, or something? Yeah. Well, I looked, I looked on eBay, and there's a Criterion Blu-ray, and it has both of those Westerns on there. And uh, yeah. nobody was bidding on it. It had like two days, so I, I bid on it. And then up to like 10 minutes from it ending, I wasn't paying attention. Somebody jumped on it, like out of the blue, and I was going to get it for like so cheap. And that, that's what pisses me off by eBay sometimes, you know. It's just yeah. at that last minute, somebody, you know. Yeah. I've probably been so, a person who's done that to somebody before, jumped on. I don't bid on too much, but I've done that, just jumped in and threw a last-minute bid mm-hmm. so I get it, you know. Yeah. If it's yeah, something I really it's, want. I don't do all, it. I, all fair, I've never I done I've never done that with movies, I don't think, but I've done it with like auto parts or something before. Mm, yeah. But yeah. Um, I, I don't, a lot of times if it's a fair price, I'll just pay, you know, the full, you know, whatever they're wanting for it. Mm-hmm. Most of the time. Yeah. Because yeah, a lot of times I just want it. it. Yeah. I prefer whenever they have, you know, the buy now price, unless it's ridiculous, you know, it's a ridiculous amount. Let's see, yeah, I, I finally I realized. I was gonna say I didn't realize uh, you can still get it on Amazon for twenty bucks. You know, free. Oh, shipping. you can. So I didn't. Yeah, so I didn't realize that. So I was just like, yeah, I'll just get it later on Amazon before it goes out of print. You know, instead of, you know, going through all that stuff on eBay. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, sometimes you got to compare prices because if you go, sometimes if you go on Amazon and it's not something, if it's on like their marketplace and it's not being sold directly by them or it's a prime item, mm-hmm. you'll you, you'll jump over to eBay and they'll be selling the same thing for like twenty percent cheaper on mm-hmm. certain items, especially like a new item, like a box set. You'll look on mm-hmm. there and they'll be somebody be selling it for like eighty bucks. You know, go on eBay and they'll be selling it for like. 40 or 50 bucks or something, you know? Yeah. I mean, I would buy more stuff straight from the company, but it's the shipping that gets me sometimes like the order directly from people sometimes. Cause it's there. Sh- you have to buy more to get free shipping and stuff. And sometimes yeah. it's like, eh, I don't know if I want to, I just want to buy this, you know, and they won't Yeah, you have to pay like $10 in shipping for one movie or something. You know, it's kind of like, eh, I gotta wait. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, some some of these places have very high shipping rate. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. They almost encourage you to buy in bulk, make it worth the while. What is yeah. uh, vinegar I mean, syndrome? They vinegar syndrome. You got to buy like over fifty dollars, and it's free shipping or something like no, that. Mm-hmm. I wish, John. I wish. It's, oh, uh, is it more? Uh-huh. Yeah, they, they went from, I think it was uh, $6 or $8, for no matter how much you buy, $6 or $8 to 12 now. Really? 12 with like the tracking. And, and I, I'd rather pay a little bit extra because, oh, wow. you know, you, you can get a $200 bill from them real quick. And I don't want that, you know, if somebody steals that, I like, I like some kind of tracking. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, they went up. Yeah. It's a uh, screen mm-hmm. factory. A shop yeah, factory. That's that's fifty dollars. Then it's oh cheap. okay yeah yeah yep yeah yeah oh Kino's like that too I think um like mm-hmm. during the flash sale I got those one movies and it was fifty dollars for free shipping so I added one more thing and it was like eight dollars or something so it, it kind of worked out you know but you know you had to buy up to fifty dollars worth to get free shipping yeah haven't bought from Kino or excuse me not Kino. But I haven't bought from Vinegar Syndrome in a while. I think it was, shoot, that one box set I was showing you a while back. It was that, but that, that was the one that Rudy had Ray the, Moore. Uh, Rudy, Rudy Ray Moore. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The Dolomite yeah. ones and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's oh, like uh, I came across a, I came across a really cool uh, black exploitation movie. Uh, it's called JD's Revenge. It's on Arrow Video. Excellent I, was, I watched it. Yeah, I watched it. Uh, I was streaming it the other night, and it's like I wasn't really going to get into it. And I, I was like half asleep, and I started watching it, man. And I was like wide awake. That movie was, it was really good, I thought. So I think I'm going to pick up that Arrow edition of it. It's, um, check that one. it's yeah, like a horror I, uh, movie. I, I got to get that. I have to get that for myself. My my friend introduced me to that, and I thought it was oh, I thought it was so awesome. I just I just saw it it's like so, maybe only like this past yeah. like year. Yeah, yeah. I, I just saw it a few weeks ago, and I had I don't think I ever heard of it. Um, I had a moment where I was really going through some movies of that genre, and um, but yeah, it was really good. It was a really good transfer. It looked really really good and it's well acted and stuff. So, yeah. oh yeah. The um the main guy is the um the dude from I mean, he's been in other stuff but he's the guy in Gremlins the uh the science teacher that gets oh, injected in the ass oh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah it's, it's it was it, it was a real surprise to me I wasn't yeah. expecting it to be really cool like that but yeah it's it's uh it's very good I was yeah. I was uh, pleasantly surprised with that mm -hmm. that is one I would yeah. I want to buy for myself for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think Amazon has it for 19, I think 1899 or something like that. Oh, that's not bad at all. That's mm -hmm. pretty good for arrow too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, vinegar's coming up with the uh the black or uh, Black Friday halfway to Black Friday sale. Coming up pretty oh, yeah. soon, so. Oh. Have you uh have you seen uh Mike, have you seen the man who shot Liberty Valance, the uh, Valance, excuse me, the the 4k that's coming out mm -mm. no it, i haven't seen it's, anything about that apparently they paramount presents has finally listened to you know how paramount has that paramount presents line out mm -hmm. and everybody was saying before it's like why do they have all these 4k restorations when they're just putting them on blu-ray well yeah. now they've the the man who shot liberty valance is actually going to be a 4k version of that oh wow that's cool. So I, I watched one just the other day. Yeah. It was funny on Mother's Day. I watched Mommy Dearest, which was a one of the Paramount Presents editions. It was funny, you know, about Joan yeah. Crawford and stuff. And it it yeah. looked good. They it had a good yeah. good print and stuff. I hadn't seen it since I was young, you know, on TV or something. But but yeah, that that has a lot. That series has a lot of possibilities with it because they got a lot of movies they could, you know, put yeah. out. Yeah, so, I'm really surprised they're doing that good with it and stuff and see what the other thing is that all the 20th century fox movies you know disney owns it now so it's like are they going to put stuff out or what you know because they own aliens and they own you know all those franchises and stuff they kind of act like they're not going to you know yeah i know it's like what do you, what do you i think they've even made some statements like they're not really going to i'm sure they will surely that they're, they're not that crazy but yeah i don't know they've well, been pretty when, crazy yeah, well, even when Warner Brothers, you know, bought out and we thought Warner Archive was going away and stuff. And I'm glad they kind of came to their senses about that, you know, and kept that going because, yeah, that's that's just too many great movies to just not put them out. I mean, we, you know, obviously we're buying stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot more of us out there. Yeah. Yeah, I buy a lot of the Warner Archives things. Mm -hmm. I did run into a movie the other day that had some pretty good special features on there. It had that Warner Night at the Movies and all that stuff still on there. It was mm -hmm. on the Blu-ray actually, and oh, yeah. you could watch you could watch a Warner Night at the Movies with the uh, the movie and everything integrated into it. Yeah, the cartoons so, and newsreel and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I got a bunch of DVDs like that. They're probably out there. I just not paid attention to some of them. Sometimes they'll have good documentaries, like one the one World War Two movie I watched a while back. Had a kind of a disturbing like Holocaust documentary built onto it. I mean, it was hmm. like a very graphic Holocaust documentary. I can't remember which hmm. movie I was watching. Yeah, I mean, it was graphic. They showed a lot. It was. Hmm. 
I'm trying to think of what movie Pretty they graphic. would put that with. It was probably what yeah. newsreel footage or something, or it well, uh, yeah, yeah. The doc, it was like kind of a documentary that had. I think it was oh, a documentary okay. put together of newsreel footage, but uh, but it was. I mean, mm. it was film. There was film that was shot in World War II, but yeah. I apologize. Yeah. I can't think of which movie it was. So I'm but yeah, mm. it was. It was kind of crazy seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't they don't really put a lot of extras on the Blu-rays anymore, which I don't I don't see what the problem is to just put them on in standard definition if they have to, you know, just put them on there yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I think that was the one or not the movies was for um Angels with Dirty Faces. I think that's the one that had it on there. Mm -hmm. Not the yeah. not the World War Two footage, but the one or not the movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. got the, the DVD of that. It's got all, all that. You know, I bought that like weeks right before they announced it on Blu-ray or something. And that's happened to me like a dozen times in the past couple of years. And it's like, oh, man, if I would have waited a couple of weeks, I would have just, you know, I don't want to, you know, buy it over within a month, you know. I'm thinking that one. Um, Jeff, how many movies do you think you have in your collection? Oh, God. Um, so if I go by what my latest case holds, Blu-ray wise and 4K wise, that would be it's like 800, no, yeah, eight eight fifty or eight seventy, some kind of weird random number like that. And then I have like a cabinet full of mm. what I call like my dirty secret movies. <laughs> just, uh -huh. it's just cause I it's just because I have like crap. I don't know. I sometimes I collect from from Dollar Tree for my videos oh, and yeah. stuff. So I, I kind of stash yeah. those away and uh, there's probably I don't know, close to a thousand. Okay. Yeah. So I mean I need I think I'm, I, I think I'm close to like three thousand now. So that's, I'm kind of running out of room. I wish I had a basement sometimes have a good setup in a basement, but, but yeah, I, I build up so many and then I kind of go through them and either put them in storage or I'll sell them off or uh, stuff like that. Just kind of go through. Yeah. Yeah. I got to Um, I have to start getting rid of my dupes like, or like, you know, DVDs I don't want anymore that I've, that I've upgraded mm -hmm. and you know, they've been through the ringer so much. It's, you know, it's, not a movie it's not like holding on to a jaws or something like that it's uh yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah it's a it's a fine line you got to kind of it, it's kind of like maintenance really you just got to kind of you know yeah no, sorry about that my dog's going crazy <laughs> he's probably telling me i yeah. go to bed yeah well fellas i think i'm need to wrap it up here i'm same yeah. way yeah, well, thanks for having me on. I uh, it was fun yeah. uh, talking to you guys. It was good. Talked about jaws yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So this yeah, was, uh, I was. I, I've had an off night. I apologize. I don't know. Sometimes. Uh, oh no, man, it's fine. We we always get off the subject a little bit, which is you know fine and stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I, we can't go real deep into jaws. I yeah. mean, I'm not a yeah critic or anything. Yeah, we went. We went. Yeah. We went. We went deep enough. We, we touched it on sequels oh, yeah. and yeah. you talked to me about mm -hmm. movie collecting. I'll talk all night. So I got to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never gonna turn no, that I, down. I, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, you can yeah, come I on just... anytime you want to. You know, we can always. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have yeah. time, we'll we'll yell at you sometime. Come yeah, on. man. Yeah. Let, let let me know. Let me know. This is great. Yeah. Uh, this is great. It was nice meeting yeah. you, Mike. Um, yeah, yeah. Good to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you guys like, change, subscribe to all of us. Uh, G cap recap and Mike at Blu-ray. Mike at Dag Films and Mike's Blu-ray and DVD collection. And I'm at Low IQ Media on Instagram and YouTube and the same for everybody else. So thanks everybody mm -hmm. for joining us this evening. And I guess we will talk to you later. Okay. See ya. Bye everybody. Bye.